Hey guys, welcome to the channel, as you see in the thumbnail what if, Issei and Rainer change their mind and stay couple part 3. Before I start, please do support for more awesome content, and subscribe my channel and like this video. Though support and follow the Belial the liar for writing that awesome fanfic, and also make sure to comment on this story, link in the description. Let's start this video. The Kabil ground his teeth in anger. Everything was going wrong. First, one of his own soldiers had defected, choosing to take up with a human boy, instead of members of her own race. Second, the boy, who she was supposed to kill, turns out to have the boosted gear of all things. Then, as if that wasn't bad enough, the traitor alerted Azazel to Kakabiel's actions. He'd been on the run ever since, and could only barely manage to stay hidden from Azazel's eyes. Now, he had a new set of problems. He had dispatched another soldier to kill a different sacred gear user, and though this time it was successful, the gear user had been reincarnated as a devil of the Gremory. The Gremory. Of all the accursed devil families, why that one? The Kabiel cursed, violently lashing out with his hands in anger. The communications magic circle started buzzing next to his ear, catching the fallen's attention. He tapped it, answering the magic call. Lord Kakabiel. It was the same soldier he'd sent to kill the second boy, Kalawiner. He trusted this one. I hope you have some good news for me. Kakabiel growled. If anything else went bad, he'd probably just forget his plans and go attack the damn town himself. The nun has arrived. Kakabiel was silent for a moment, then sighed in relief. He'd been expecting more bad news. Excellent. Proceed as planned, with one modification. Yes, Lord. Let Dona see candle the ritual. Tonight, while he does that, I want you to kill that traitorous bitch and her human toy. Take Middle with you. Understand. But, Lord Kakabiel. Let me make myself clear. If you make the same mistake as her, there will be nowhere you can hide. Do you understand? I understand. Then go. Yes, Lord. The call ended. Kakabiel laughed. Finally, something was going his way. Rainer opened her eyes. She was in her shared bed, spooning a say. Apparently, he liked to be the little spoon. Rainer giggled a little, careful not to be too loud. They were totally intertwined, with even their laces together. She remembered slowly falling asleep on the couch, which means he brought her to the bed. The thought of Issei carrying her to the bed like a princess made Rainer want to squeal. She squeezed him tighter. Rainer was thoroughly enjoying being with the sleeping Issei, but she craved his attention. So, she decided to wake him up. Not in a normal way, though. She wanted to tease him a little. As close as they were, it was child's play for Rainer to get her to Issei's ear. So, you're saying a couple thousand years is old, huh? Rainer asked, narrowing her eyes at Issei. He got the vibe that he'd said something wrong, but couldn't figure out what. Oh yes. That's pretty old, I think Issei said, rubbing the back of his head. Rainer sighed, rubbing the bridge of her nose. Drake had been right, his partner was blissfully uninformed. Issei, how old do you think I am? Answer honestly. Issei gulped. He really didn't want to do that. He knew she wasn't his age, since she was an angel and all, but she couldn't be over 100, right? She'd be a bag of bones, at that point. He remembered her saying something about being an original angel, or was it that she was originally an angel? Issei had no idea. UM75. Issei said hesitantly. Rainer laughed out loud. She hadn't expected him to be that wrong. Issei, all pure-blooded angels like me were born before the Great War. Now, try again. How old is your girlfriend? Issei gulped. He hadn't expected her to be that old. Not that it bothered him, he just wanted to be sure he didn't offend her with his next guess. If she was born before the Great War, that had to make her at least 2100 years old. The Great War had lasted 100 years and ended in the death of God around the year 0 AD, so she was at the very least 2100 years old. And taking some serious liberties with the Great War here, since there's not much available on it. Bear with me, it's all for the plot. Okay, okay are you 2100? Issei asked, unsure. He really had no idea of her age, and even 2100 was just a shot in the dark. Rainer sighed. Issei, this year, in December, I'll turn 4130. Issei gaped at her. Still think a couple thousand is old? She asked teasingly. There was no way he could have known how old she was, so there wasn't any point in getting mad at him. Rainer was a tad bit worried at how Issei had reacted to her age, but he'd never once given a reason to doubt him, so why start now? Wow, that's awesome, you've seen the rise and fall of, like, all of the coolest human civilizations. Issei asked, an excited gleam in his eyes. Rainer sighed, though she had a smile on her face. Yep, I'm in love with a nerd. Yeah, I guess. The Romans really knew how to party. Greeks, too. The Aztecs were a little too much into human sacrifice for me. Rainer said, shuddering. The thought flashed in Issei's mind, and he suddenly grew very solemn. 
Rainer noticed instantly, of course. Hey, what's wrong? She asked, tilting her head. She shifted in her position. Issei was sitting with his back on their bed's headboard, so she just put her head in his lap, looking up at him. He absentmindedly stroked her silk soft hair, which had become one of his favorite hobbies recently. You've lived such a long time, and I'll only live, like, 80 years, maybe Issei said, looking extremely downcast. Rainer giggled at him, recapturing his attention. She had a face that screamed I know something you don't know. Issei, you're not human, you know. With that overblown lizard in your arm, for all intents and purposes, you're a dragon. You've probably got a dragon's lifespan, too. If not, then it's no big deal anyway. Once you're in the supernatural world, it's child's play to extend your lifespan. I could probably just ask Azazel to hook you up, if nothing else. Don't you worry about how long you're gonna live. We've got a long happy life together ahead of us, so don't go trying to get out of it now. Rainer said, a smile on her face. Issei visibly perked up at her words. Thanks Rainer. MHMM. So is a dragon, am I superhuman or anything? I dunno. Do you feel superhuman? Not really. Then probably not. You're looking a bit muscular, though. More than when we first met. It suits you. Rainer said, putting her hand on Issei's arms. True to her word, the once crony boy was filling out with lean muscle, most likely due to Drake's power. Issei hadn't noticed, himself. They were silent for a time, both content to just sit in each other's company. After a few minutes, Issei broke the silence. Why in the world would you show me that horrible and I'm last night? Issei asked out of nowhere, making Rainer laugh. I thought you'd like it. She said, giggling. I did like it, and then I didn't. Now I don't know how I feel. You sound like an angsty teen. I am an angsty teen. Rainer laughed out loud. That's fair. Issei smiled, glad Rainer appreciated his slightly self-deprecating joke. Issei spied the jewelry he'd bought her, gleaming on her, the silver and white, a bright contrast to the black of her silken nightwear. He reached to the pendant and held it in his hand. The shape of the wings and heart really spoke to him, and he knew it hit Rainer just right too. I see you're wearing the necklace. Issei said. Of course I am. I was enchanted by it too. Rainer said, watching Issei touch the necklace on her dot Issei looked puzzled. Enchanted? He asked, curious. MHMM. It'll never break now, unless someone really powerful smashes it. So, I can wear it all the time without worrying about the chain getting damaged. Rainer said, smiling brightly. That's great. I didn't know you could do that. There's a lot you don't know I can do. Anything in particular? Issei asked, eager to see inside his girlfriend's massive bag of tricks. And how about this? Rainer asked. She held her right hand outstretched, and a bright red spear made of pure light began to form, pointed straight up towards the ceiling. It was almost completely crimson, but had streaks of bright whitish gold in it, which surprised Rainer. It had only been red before. Issei marveled at it, in awe at the sight of the jagged and beautiful spear. He reached out to touch it, running his lightly across the surface of the weapon. He commented breathlessly. Weapons of light are the main weapon of angels, both fallen and pure. Rainer explained, happy her lover was intrigued by her display. Amazing Issei said, enthralled by the beauty of the spear. From what Rainer said, this was the core of her very being. Her essence as a fallen angel, as a living being. He was extremely happy to have the chance to see it. I'm glad you think so. They're individual to each fallen. Pure angels all have the same kind of spear, but fallen angels are unique. What you're feeling is my pure magical essence, basically my personality. No wonder it's so beautiful, Issei said, examining the spear. Rainer blushed. Of course he'd say something like that. He didn't even have to think about it. Issei knew what to say to make her melt without even trying. Rainer touched the bottom of the floating spear with her, and it dispersed into bright red and gold motes of light, showering the room in a beautiful glow. Issei watched on with awe. All right, that was pretty awesome. Issei said, sitting back against the headboard of their bed. Rainer laughed. Issei, that wasn't really all that cool. All fallen can do that. Rainer said. Still, though. Your spear was gorgeous. I could look at the other fallen spears all day, and none of them would come close to you or yours. Issei said, looking down at her in his lap, smiling. Really? You liked my light show that much? Rainer asked him quietly. MHMM. Your spear will always have a special place in my heart. Rainer giggled. There was some dramatic irony in there, somewhere. If you two lizards are done, there's someone at the door. Drake announced, startling the pair. Rainer and Issei got up from the bed, begrudgingly, and moved to the main room. Sure enough, as soon as they got there, an knock resounded from the door. Issei moved to open it, Rainer standing back. As the door swung open, it revealed a beautiful blue-haired woman in a red leather outfit that left very little to the imagination. 
Issei gaped, and Raynor moved instantly in front of him, blocking him from the blue-haired woman. Alwerner what the hell are you doing here? Raynor yelled, shielding Issei with her own body. Alwerner made no move forward. She stood in the doorway, trying to think of what to say. After a few tense moments of silence, she opened her hesitantly, finally deciding on the words to use. Raynor, Kakabiel has ordered the two of you dead. Kalwerner said, quickly. She didn't say anything else, just waited for their reactions. That's not possible. I told Azizel what he's been doing, he should be in prison by now. Are you telling me Kakabiel is still active? Raynor yelled. If that was true, her and Issei weren't safe. Not even almost. Azizel's been hunting him, but he's still free. He's ordered Middle and I to kill you and Issei tonight. Raynor narrowed her eyes on the other fallen. Issei finally understood what was going on. Kalwerner was one of the members of Kakabiel's other fallen faction, the one Raynor betrayed. Issei summoned the boosted gear, not sure what would happen. And? What will you do? Raynor asked quietly. She'd always been friends with Kalwerner, but she would not hesitate to kill her if she tried to hurt Issei. Do don't know. I don't know. I don't want to, I really don't. Kalwerner spoke quietly. She looked like she wanted to cry. If I don't, he'll kill me. If you do, I'll kill you. Raynor said shortly. She had absolutely zero tolerance for anyone who tried to hurt her lover. If Kalwerner gave her half a reason, she'd ram a light spear through the blue-haired Follin's heart faster than you can say tragedy. The tear fell from Kalwerner's eye. She didn't want to die, and she didn't want to fight her friend. She didn't know what to do. Issei sighed. He dispersed the boosted gear and moved around Raynor. He took Kalwerner's hand and led her inside the apartment, shocking both her and Raynor. Issei, what are you doing? She just said she has to kill us. Raynor said, not understanding why he did something like that. Though, even as she said the words, she knew he'd try to help Kalawerner. He was just too kind. She also said she doesn't want to. Issei said. He led Kalawerner to the bar, where she sat down. Raynor sighed and sat next to her. Issei sat across from them. Stay here with us. Issei said, looking Kalawerner in the eyes. While shocked at first, Raynor resigned herself to Issei's plan. They were going to try and save her. Issei would never let someone die if he had a choice, provided they weren't his enemy. Kalwerner wasn't his enemy, not yet, and he'd do what he could to make sure it stayed that way. W what? Kalwerner said, not sure if she even heard him right. Stay here with us. Raynor echoed. You'll be safer from Kakabiel, and you won't have to kill anyone. Are you really okay with that? Kalwerner asked her, unsure. Honestly? No. Raynor said, shaking her head. But, my boyfriend is one of the pickiest people on the planet. He doesn't trust a whole lot of people, especially not women, but he's decided to help you. So, naturally, I'm with him. Raynor said, looking at Issei. He smiled brightly at her. I don't know we don't know what to say the blue-haired Fullen said, holding back tears. Kalwerner wanted no part of Kakabiel's newest plans, and she knew she'd get killed no matter whose side she took, but if her friend would really offer asylum, she'd take it. Say you'll stay, Dumbus. Raynor said good-naturedly. We've got a spare bedroom and everything. Issei said cheerfully. Dini will. Thank you both. Kalwerner said, wiping her face. So, do you have anything to bring or do you want me to just show you the room? Raynor asked. I've got some stuff packed, I just need to go back to the church and grab it. I considered just straight up running, so I had most of my things ready to go. Kalwerner said, standing up. Issei and Raynor stood up after her. Be safe. We don't know what Kakabiel will do next. Raynor said. Well, I do. He's not supposed to be in Kuo for another week or so, and that was before he was on the run. I doubt he'll come here personally. Kalawerner said. Even so, be careful. Issei said. Sure thing, handsome. Kalawerner said, winking at Issei. She'd taken a liking to Raynor's new boyfriend. Raynor saw and narrowed her eyes. Issei blushed and looked to Raynor, who glared at him next. He said, I didn't do anything. Gesture with his hands. I'll be back soon. Kalawerner said. She snapped her and teleported away. Raynor immediately glomped on Issei, tackling hugging him right onto their nearby couch. You're so damn sweet it makes me want to scream. Raynor yelled, practically burying herself in the boy. He laughed and flailed about, not in control of his arms. Raynor, in her rapid movements, was violently tickling Issei. She slowly stopped and just lay still on top of him, enjoying the boy's th. Issei breathed heavily, his cheeks red. I didn't want your friend to get killed. Issei said, after a bit. Raynor looked surprised. How'd you know she was my friend? You've never even met her, I thought. She wouldn't have come to warn us if she wasn't close to you. Plus, you mentioned her when we were talking to Sona. Raynor wanted to kick herself for asking such a stupid question. Oh oh, right. 
Do you think she was the one who killed Mitsuda? Issei asked. Sona did say she had blue hair. I guess so. Like I said yesterday, I don't know why she would, but it's likely. I should give her a high five when she gets back. Rainer laughed. I agree. Hal Werner teleported back to the room at the church, giddy. She'd been searching for a way out of Kakabiel's grasp for some time, and finally she had one. She'd even considered joining the devils at one point. That wasn't a problem anymore. She collected all her things and put them in the mostly packed suitcase that was already on her bed. Going somewhere? A voice asked. Kalawerner was bent over her suitcase, facing away from the door, so she never noticed it open or someone walk in. A single tear rolled down Kalawerner's face as she recognized the voice. The Kabil walked forward and put his hand around Kalawerner's neck as she turned to face him. He lifted her high into the air, choking her. She flailed her arms around, panicking, but he wasn't budging. You disappoint me, Kalawerner. I thought I could trust you. I warned you, didn't I? I told you what would happen. And now, I have to make an example out of you. Kakabiel said, shaking his head. Kalawerner looked at the door to see Dona Seek and Middle looking at her with scared expressions on their faces. She reached out to them, asking for help, but they didn't respond. They just watched. Kakabiel looked at them. This is what happens to traitors. Watch well. Kakabiel said to the pair of fallen in the door. Halwerner heard a disgusted snap, and the most agonizing pain she'd ever felt was up her neck. The last thing she ever saw in the world was Kakabiel's sneer, and everything faded to black. When Kalwerner opened her eyes, all she could see was darkness. Slowly, as her vision swam, the world came into focus. She was in a dark room, entirely concrete, dangling from the ceiling via chains wrapped tight around her ankles. Her arms were chained to the floor in a similar fashion, leaving no room for her to even struggle, much less escape. She tried to call out, only to realize she was taped shut. Halwerner didn't understand what was happening. She knew she died, no questions there. You don't just walk away from having your crushed, supernatural being or not. What she didn't know is how she was now alive, or why she was in chains. The crack of light illuminated the dark room. The sharp contrast between the bright light and the bleak darkness hurt her eyes, but she looked on anyway, trying to get a glimpse of who was approaching. Awake, are we? Good the newcomer said, slowly. She didn't recognize the person's voice, not at first. When she did, she had to struggle to stay calm. Freed Selzen, exiled exorcist and torturer extraordinaire, stood in front of her dressed in his long black coat and holding a large dagger. Kalwerner's eyes went wide and she struggled violently against her restraints. No, no, no. You're not going anywhere, not yet. We've gotta have some fun, first. Asia didn't go through all the trouble of healing you just for us to let you go again. See, Kakabiel wasn't happy about what you tried to do, but he's decided to forgive you. That being S.A. id, he still wants to make sure you don't decide to run off again. So. Dust a little round of conditioning with yours truly and you'll be back on the winning team, M.K. Freed exclaimed. On the last word of his sentence, he drove the dagger leg, making her scream and flail about. Tears poured down from the upside down Fallen's eyes, blinding her. Oh Asia, wouldn't you come patch up our friend? She seems to be in a bit of a rough patch. Freed said in a sing-song voice, laughing maniacally as he ripped the dagger from Kalawerner's leg. A terrified-looking blonde girl in a nun's habit approached the writhing Fallen, looking apprehensively at Freed. The girl, Asia, put her hands up to the Fallen's heavily bleeding leg, and two rings appeared on both her middle and began to shine with a bright green light. The gouge in Kalawerner's leg started to rapidly close, healing quickly. If Kalawerner was capable of coherent thought at this point, she'd be surprised at the fact that the blonde girl was actually healing her. Once she realized that, she would have been terrified by the revelation that Asia was only healing her, so Freed could hurt her more. Once finished healing Kalawerner's leg, Asia stepped back. She herself was crying, and tears flowed freely down her face. The timid girl wanted no part in what Freed was doing, but if she could use her power to grant the chained fallen even a small bit of relief, she'd do it. Even if the fallen had been planning to kill her for that same power. Alwerner calmed down enough to think rationally, assisted by the numbing effect of Asia's healing abilities. She was just coherent enough to register what was happening as Freed's dagger ripped again, this time in her stomach. Freed cackled as the fallen's blood poured over his hands, and Asia screamed while Kalwerner thrashed against her chains. Asia began to frantically heal her, while Freed leaned in close to her face. Oh, Kalwerner. We are going to have such fun, you and I Freed whispered in her ear, before taking a syringe out of his coat pocket. He wiped her eyes clear, so she could see what he was doing. Kalwerner recoiled at his touch, but was filled with even more dread at the sight of a filled needle in the exorcist's hand. She tried her hardest to scream as Freed pushed the needle neck, not being careful or gentle in the slightest. Kalwerner finally managed to get the tape off her, just as Freed took the needle out. 
She screamed louder than she ever had in her life. Freed laughed. What did you do to me, you bastard? What the hell was in that needle? Kalawarner screamed, struggling against the chains. Does something to make you a little more interesting. Be lucky that this was all Kakabiel told me to put in you. You're just my type. Freed said, running his down Kalawarner dot. Father Freed, this is wrong. You shouldn't be doing this. Asia exclaimed, finally working up the nerve to speak out against the horrible man. She was rewarded for her bravery with a hard backhanded slap to the face, sending her sprawling on the hard stone floor. Shut up. Unless you want to be next, keep your trap shut and do as I say. Freed growled, glaring at the girl. He turned back to Kalawarner, who had begun twitching violently. Oh, yes he can't see you're about ready to cause mayhem well, let's have a little more fun before that, okay. Freed cooed, whispering directly into Kalawarner's ear. She tried to scream, but she suddenly couldn't even manage so much as a groan. Now, let's get back to it. Essay checked the time on his phone, biting the nails on his other hand. Alwerner had been gone for almost nine hours. It was already dusk, and they hadn't seen or heard from her other than when she came to their house. Essay knew that she was probably in trouble. This Kakabiel seemed like bad business, and if he discovered that Kalawainer was also planning on betraying him, he would be none too happy. She'd said that he wasn't supposed to be at their Kuo base, but it was always possible that he had shown up. Essay put his phone away and looked at the hand he'd been chewing on. His nails were gnawed past his dot he barely even knew Kalawarner, but he was beyond worried she'd gotten herself hurt. We've got to help her, right? I mean, she's your friend Essay said, pacing around the living room in circles. She is, but if there's even a 1% chance that Kakabiel at that church, we're not going anywhere near it. I won't let you. I value your life far more than hers, Essay. Rayner said, walking to her nervous boyfriend, who was wearing a path into the floor of the penthouse by this point. She hugged Essay, trying to calm him down. Besides, she made her choice. How important could a suitcase have been, anyway, to risk being captured or killed? She should have just stayed here. Rayner said, stroking his hair. I know, but still Essay said, letting his girlfriend console him. She pulled away from him and took his hands in hers. He wouldn't meet her gaze and stared at the floor. Hey. Look. Rayner said, tilting her head to look Essay in the eyes. She doesn't matter anyway. I made the choice to abandon the other fallen and everyone else when I decided to be with you. What they do, that's up to them. All that I'm worried about is you. Got it. Rayner said, pulling Essay close. Essay buried his head in Rayner's shoulder. As strange as it sounded, the smell of Rayner's raven hair comforted him greatly, and as he breathed in her scent, he calmed down. You're right. Of course, you're right. Issei pulled away from Rayner and sat down on their couch, Rayner sitting down beside him. Why do you even want to save Kalawarner so bad? You've known her for less than an hour. Rayner asked. Isn't it? Rayner said, smirking. It is devious, and I'm so glad I caught wind of it before you tried it. A voice said from behind the couch, startling Issei and Rayner. Both jumped up, readying their respective weapons, only to see Azazel grinning. Yo. The commander-in-chief of the Fallen said, flashing a peace sign. A green teleportation sigil faded beneath him. Issei sighed and fell back on the couch. Rayner sat beside him, grumbling. Does just anyone come here nowadays? Issei asked, rubbing his forehead. His complaint went unheeded. So I guess that's a no-go. Rayner asked the man who sat down opposite them on the other couch. Oh yeah, definitely a no-go. You know very well if I engage Kakabiel, the fallout would be ridiculous. Everyone on this side of Tokyo would know about it. I can't personally attack him, devils or no devils. Sorry. Why do you need to get inside that church, anyway? Azazel asked. He'd dropped by to tell Issei something, but found them in the middle of a far more interesting conversation. One of our friends is captured inside. Issei explained. Oh, okay. That makes a solid amount of sense. Azazel said, nodding. So you can't personally help us? Rayner asked. Not with Kakabiel. If a bunch of his lackeys were to show up here, I could totally destroy them without a fuss, but not a cadre. The battle would be too much. Bam Rayner sighed. Well then, I should tell you we're expecting an attack here. Unless we attack first, I guess. Really? Who's attacking? Not Kakabiel himself, surely? Azazel asked, interested. I hope not. No, just Middleton possibly Kalawarner as far as we know. Both two winged angels. Yeah. Just stomp them flat and move on. Azazel said dismissively, waving his hand. I guess that's probably what's going to happen. How'd you even get that information? How'd you find out they're going to attack, I mean? Azazel said. He still had several blanks about the whole situation. Alwerner came here to warn us. Issei said. Alright, I'm officially confused. Is this Kalwerner on your side or not? Azazel asked. Maybe. 
She came here, and we offered her asylum instead of playing pawn for Kakabiel. She accepted and went back to the church to get her things, but hasn't come back yet. It's been almost nine hours already. Rayner explained. So she's the one that you're rescuing. Didn't you just say she was going to attack Middled? As Aze asked. She might. Still a bunch of unknowns here. Rayner said. Maybe she was just scouting you out and she's actually fine. As Azel offered. I don't think so. That wasn't the vibe I got. I think she got back and they discovered she was turning traitor, so they captured her. Issei said. So you don't know she's in a pinch. Okay, I think I understand the situation, but humor me. What's stopping you from knocking down the door of the church and going to get her, captured or not? Azazel asked, rubbing his goatee. The only real problem is Kakabiel. Aside from him, no one in that church is really a threat. If we could get him away, it would be simple to get inside. Rayner explained. That is quite the predicament. Azazel said. He had a grin at the edges of his, like he knew something they didn't. No one noticed. There's got to be something we can do, right? Issei asked. He already wasn't okay with letting Kalwerner be captured, but now that it was implied she was being tortured, the thought of just sitting around and waiting made him feel sick. Oh, don't worry. There's someone doing something right about Azazel checking his watch. Now. Rayner and Issei looked at each other, not really understanding. Who? Rayner asked. And what? The white one is currently engaging Kakabiel. Rayner gaped and Issei's eyes went wide. I brought him with me exclusively for that, but I didn't have any idea it would help you too. Azazel said with a big smile. Seriously? If he's dealing with Kakabiel, there's nothing stopping us from going to save Kalwerner. Issei said, standing up. He'd only known the blue-haired fallen for all of about 10 minutes, but if he had a chance to save someone from torture or death, he'd take it. Not to mention, she was Raynor's friend. Yup. Consider this my gift to you, for getting good with the devils. I owed you one. Azazel said, nodding to Issei. I've got something else for you, too. Have Rainer teach you how to contact me, and when you've got a moment, give me a call. I came up with something you'd want to hear. Azazel said, giving Issei a thumbs up, which the boy returned. Thanks Azazel. Rainer said. Issei echoed her. Well, I better get going. Shem his eye doesn't know I'm gone, and if I'm not back in time for his meeting, he'll blow a gasket. Peace out and be careful. Azazel said before standing and teleporting away. Okay, okay. New plan. While the white dragon attacks Kakabiel, we'll get together with the devils and go to the church. We'll save Kalawerner and anyone else they have locked up and get out. Sounds good. Rayner said, standing up and stretching her wings before retracting them. Issei nodded resolutely. Great. Okay, give Rias a call. Or Sona. Up to you really. I'd rather Sona, but Rias would be more likely to help us with the promise of a reward, I'd bet. Rayner said while Issei pulled out his phone. I think Rias would be better. We're already good with Sona, we need to get closer with Rhea's peerage. Plus, I don't know about you, but I'd much rather risk someone from Rhea's group than Sona's. Sona is actually pleasant to be around. Issei said. Rainer grinned at him. Getting a naughty streak, are we? Rainer asked, liking the darker side of her normally kind boyfriend. I'd rather nobody get hurt, but if I had to choose someone to sacrifice, it would definitely be Rhea's or that queen of hers, no doubt. Issei said, nodding. With that in mind, he dialed Rhea's number. Hello. Rias answered. Hey Grimory, it's a say hi do. Oh, hello hi do. How are you? I'm alright. Grimory, I need to ask a favor of you. What do you need? Also, could you just call me Rias? I'm not a particular fan of my family name. Uh, sure thing. Call me a say, I guess. Anyway, a comrade of ours has been captured by the fallen in the church. We've got it from Azazel himself that Kakabiel is occupied somewhere else, so it's the perfect opportunity to rescue her, and we'd like your help. I'd like to help you, Issei, but I'm afraid we can't do something like that for nothing in return. Oh don't worry, it's not for nothing. I'll owe you a favor. I'm told a favor from the Red Dragon carries a lot of weight. But it does. Okay, we'll help you. Who is this comrade, if you don't mind my asking? Issei's thoughts came to a screeching halt. He'd forgotten all about Kalwerner's interactions with the Gremory group. She'd straight up killed one of their members. Issei cursed silently and sent the word shit to Rainer, who made a what's the problem. Gesture. Issei put him up and tried to think of a response. Issei, are you there? Am I'm here. Rias, if I told you the comrade was the same angel who killed Mitsuda, would you still help us? Issei, I don't think I can. She murdered him. On Kakabiel's orders. Now she's being tortured by his lackeys. That may be, but I can't just rescue my servant's killer like that. I just deal ask him what he thinks, hold on. Issei sighed and pulled the phone from his face. What's the problem? 
Rayner asked. She'd gotten a little bit from Issei's side of the conversation, but not all of it. We overlook the minor fact that Kalawarner killed Mitsuda. Oh. Oops. Yeah. Oops. Issei. Issei raised the phone back to his face. I'm here. We'll help you, but you're going to have to make good on that favor. I've got a raiding game coming up soon, and I'll need you and your girlfriend to be proxy pieces in my peerage. I don't know what that means, but okay. Whatever it takes, as long as it doesn't mean we become devils ourselves. Then we're in agreement. We'll come to your place, send me an address. Sure thing. I'll text it to you here in a second. Thanks Riaz. Of course. The call ended, and Issei sent over the address. So we're good. What did she ask you for? Rayner asked. She wants us to be proxy pieces in a raiding game whatever that stuff means. Oh. That's not that bad, actually. We just have to fight on her team in what's essentially a gladiatorial deathmatch without the death bit. Oh. Fun. That's not as bad as it could have been. She could have asked us to join her peerage. I'm glad she didn't. I have zero interest in being one of her slaves. That makes two of us. So, did she say she was on her way, or what? Rayner asked. As if on cue, a bright red sigil started shining in the middle of the room, taking up a large amount of the floor. Issei and Rayner stepped back, both of them suddenly glad they'd gotten dressed earlier after Kalwiner left instead of staying in pajamas. Five people came out of the magic circle. Riaz, Akeno, and Mitsuda, all of whom Issei recognized, but the last two, he didn't know. There was a pretty blonde boy and a small white-haired girl. The circle faded away. So, we're rescuing the bitch that ganked me. You're lucky I'm in a forgiving mood, Haidu. Mitsuda said. Thanks for coming. I know this will be hard for you. Issei said, nodding to the boy. Mitsuda narrowed his eyes, not expecting the camaraderie. Yeah Mitsuda replied, not expecting Issei to say anything other than go to hell. Well, Issei. We're here. Allow me to formally introduce the rest of my peerage. Ria said, gesturing to the people beside her. This is Kaneko Taoju, my rook. The white-haired girl gave a half-hearted wave and didn't say anything. This is Kibuyudo, my knight. The blonde boy waved also, though far more enthusiastic about it than the little girl. It's good to meet you both. Issei said, nodding to them. Hi Issei. Akeno said, giving him a flirtatious wink. She liked him, she just didn't like his choice in company. I don't remember saying you could use my first name. Issei said, narrowing his eyes at her. He definitely wasn't over her comment about Rainer being a pet. Akeno pursued her, myth that her attempt at being nice was so offhandedly deflected. Rainer was surprised at his comment. She was happy he'd said it, but she never expected him to openly berate her like that. Two weeks ago, he was afraid to even talk to women, and now he could sass one he barely knew without a second thought. He's making serious progress. Rainer thought. Okay, so here's the situation. Kakabiel is being engaged by the White Dragon Emperor as we speak, so we literally could not have a better opportunity to rescue Kalawarner. I know you've got bad blood with her, but I promise you she was only acting under orders. Rainer explained. We understand. We're ready when you are. Rhea said, crossing her arms and nodding. Rainer glanced at Issei, asking him a nonverbal question. He nodded to her, a fire in his eyes like she'd only seen a couple of times. I'll teleport us, then. Rainer said, and moved close to the peerage. Akeno visibly recoiled from her proximity, earning a glare from Issei, but she moved back into position swiftly. Issei moved next to Rainer, and Rhea's peerage stood behind them both. Rainer let out her six wings, and a large green fallen magic circle appeared beneath them all. Several moments later, they were all outside an overgrown and abandoned church. I didn't know your girlfriend had six wings. That's quite impressive. Rhea's whispered to Issei, quietly enough so Rainer couldn't hear. He turned to her, a grin on his face. Isn't she great? He asked, before looking back to the church. Rainer walked in front, the others all following behind her. They all approached the large doors of the church, and everyone shared a glance before the small girl, Kaneko, walked up and kicked the doors off their hinges. Issei marveled at her strength, as no one had actually told him what it meant when Rhea said she was a rook. Inside the church was a large room with ruined pews, statues, and art. Several of the stone statues were slashed in half, and all of the furniture around the room were in various states of disrepair. At the far end of the room, near the mostly destroyed altar, was a girl in a black dress and a tall guy in priestly robes. They turned to look at the intruders. Ah. I was wondering if you'd come. If you didn't show up within the hour, little middled here was going to go kill you and little shit boyfriend, so I'm glad you saved her the trouble. The priest yelled, taking a gun and sword hilt out of his robes. He pressed a button on the hilt, and a light blade appeared. Freed. You know you can't beat us all, so just get out of the way. Rainer yelled, spinning up magic circles in her hands. Like hell. 
This angel and I have more than enough firepower between the two of us to kill you, your stud, and your filthy devil friends. Freed yelled. Middled, the small fallen in the gothic dress, looked hesitant, but when she remembered what happened to Kalwerner, she knew she didn't have a choice. Middled summoned her light spear and set into a fighting stance. We'll handle these two. Go on ahead, you guys. Kiba said, Akeno and Kaneko flanking him. Boo, three devils. And one bombshell. I think we'll have some extra fun, K. Freed yelled, rushing Akeno. She threw her hands up and formed a barrier to block his attack. At the same time, a light spear slammed the barrier. Between Freed's attack and middled, the barrier almost broke, but Kiba quickly attacked Freed, pushing him away from the barrier and giving Kaneko and Akeno an opportunity to attack middled. Attack her they did. Akeno fired a blast of lightning at the fallen, and Kaneko threw a statue at her. Middle dodged the statue, but took the bolt of lighting head on, causing major damage. Akeno laughed as Middle screamed in pain. The statue Kaneko had thrown smashed into the altar, destroying it completely and revealing a staircase down. Riaz, Mitsuda, Rainer, and Isaiah ran past the fight, rushing to the basement of the church. While the fight raged above, a sinister ritual was enacted below. The four rushed into the church's massive basement and were greeted with a horrible sight. A small blonde girl, completely nude, was strung up on a large metal cross. She screamed and writhed, but couldn't get free. In front of the cross, watching with her glee, was a tall man in a fedora and trench coat. Below the cross, down a tall staircase, was a small army of exiled priests, all standing between the group of heroes and the tall man. As the group ran into the room, the tall man saw them and yelled for the priests to attack. What had to be fifty or more priests surrounded the group, and Riaz and Rainer readied magic circles in each hand, while Lisei and Mitsuda summoned their gears. The noise in the room was intense, with the priests chanting in the ritual, and several of them yelling orders and scrambling around to engage the group. Asia what the hell is that bastard doing? She's screaming. Mitsuda yelled. He apparently recognized the girl on the cross. They're taking her sacred gear. The ritual will kill her. Rainer yelled back. She had no idea where all the priests had come from, but she knew what they were doing. We've got to help her. Issei yelled. Boost. We've got this. These ones are no match for us, you two find your friend. Go. Ria said, yelling. With one twist of her arms, Ria launched a vicious red and black attack that disintegrated a large portion of the priests. Mitsuda's dog appeared from out of his own shadow and wrapped around his arm, forming a longsword. They all began to cut through the priests, Riaz and Mitsuda fighting toward the ritual, while Rainer and Issei tore a path out behind them so the two of them could get back up the stairs. Issei was up to six boosts by the time they finally got to the stairs again, almost at his limit. Issei and Rainer ran back up the stairs, Rainer grumbling to herself about how they just came down those stairs. Once they reached the top of the large staircase, several moments later, they saw Akeno using small barriers to deflect swing after swing of Freed's light blade, with Kiba and Kaneko on the ground nursing large wounds. Middled was nowhere to be seen, but there was a large pile of feathers in one corner of the room. Akeno was clearly on the losing side of the fight. Her clothes were tattered, and Freed wasn't showing any signs of slowing down as he broke barrier after barrier. He let out a yell and hit her with a strong enough attack that he knocked Akeno to the ground and moved in to kill her. Get away from her. Rainer yelled and flew at Freed from behind. He'd been so focused on attacking the Gremory Queen, he had no idea there was someone behind him. When a light spear ripped through his shoulder and tore off his left arm, he screamed and jumped away. He yelled angrily. Damn it. I needed that arm to kill devils. Freed yelled, cursing violently. Rainer pulled Akeno up off the ground. Akeno uttered a quick thanks and went to check on Kiba and Kaneko. Shit. Shit. Shitty shit shit. Freed yelled. He reached into his coat as Rainer ready to attack him again. Issei was set to charge the man with his gauntlet, ready to assist Rainer. He never got the chance as Freed pulled an orb out of his coat and hurled it at the ground. It exploded in a flash of light and when it cleared, Freed was gone. Rainer cursed and dispersed her spear. Issei lowered his gauntlet but didn't unsummon it or reset the counter. Issei and Rainer shared a glance and then went into the back rooms of the church. There were iron cells placed frequently in a very long hallway, suggesting the place was used for a bit more than casual worship. Rainer had never actually been into the rear of the church, and she didn't know where to even begin looking for Kalwerner. All the cells were empty, but as they neared the end of the hallway, they came to a closed door made of heavy iron with no windows. The door was cracked, and faint groaning was heard from inside. Rainer nodded to the say, and he slowly pushed open the massive door. It would have been heavy had he not been up to six boosts. Inside the room, they found Kalwerner dangling from the ceiling and wrapped in chains, with blood all over her. She shivered and groaned, her eyes closed. Rainer gasped, and Issei wanted to throw up. 
They ran to her side, Issei grabbing and breaking the chains binding her. As dark as the situation was, he couldn't help but feel awesome at his boosted strength, powerful enough to pull apart chains with his bare hands. Rainer caught Kalawarner before she fell to the floor and quickly inspected the groaning girl for any life-threatening wounds. This this doesn't make any sense. Rainer said. What doesn't? Is she okay? She's fine. That's what doesn't make sense. There's not a single cut on her. I don't have any idea where all this blood came from. Rainer said, checking the fallen thoroughly. Halwarner coughed. Her eyes opened, slowly. Issei and Rainer both looked at her with anticipation. As she saw the two of them, her eyes went wide. She screamed violently, startling the two of them, and quickly stood up. She screamed at them, and backed away. Halwarner? What the hell is wrong with you? Rainer asked, confused. Issei didn't understand what was happening. What had they done to her? Are you alright? Calm down. Issei said, slowly edging towards her. As he came within a couple feet of the seemingly feral angel, she lunged at him, forming a spear of light in her hands. No. Rainer yelled, jumping at the two of them. Issei dodged aside just in time to prevent the spear hitting him, but couldn't avoid damage completely. Kalwarner's spear lacerated his arm, and he started to bleed profusely. Rainer pulled Issei away as soon as she reached him and sent a swift punch into Kalwarner's face, knocking her into the concrete wall and giving them plenty of time to flee the room. Issei and Rainer rushed out of the room, slammed the door behind them, and ran down the hallway. They stopped after putting some distance between themselves in the room, Rainer looking Issei's wound over and quickly used a healing spell to stop the bleeding. He thanked her. Halwarner was trying her hardest to open the door. They could hear her running it to it and scratching it, but nothing she did manage to open it. What's wrong with her? Issei asked, panting. She's gotta be drugged. She's acting like a beast, and that spear was more powerful than it should have been. Rainer said. They could hear her growling from the room now, and there was scratching on the door. That bastard Freed must have done this. There's no telling what all he used on her. Rainer said, gritting her teeth. Can we save her? Issei asked. Do don't know. It would be safer to just kill her. Rainer said, forming a spear in her hands. Even as Rainer said the words, she knew she didn't want to do it. She didn't want to kill her friend, and Issei knew it too. You don't really want to do that, though. Do you? I know you want to protect me, but I can tell you don't really want to kill your friend. We'll fix her, and you won't have to kill anyone. Issei said, taking Rainer's hand. He pushed her spear out of her hand with his, dropping it to the floor. Tears welled up in her eyes. He knew more about her feelings than she did, at this point. Rainer wrapped her boyfriend in a tight hug. Reset. Suddenly it was a much looser hug as Issei fell onto his knees. She laughed, despite the situation, and brought him to his feet. Issei threw his hand over her shoulder with his good arm, his right, and they walked back into the room with the destroyed altar. You damn devils. I'll kill you all. They walked into the main room of the church just in time to see the last fallen, the tall man that was conducting the ritual, take a direct hit from Rhea's Gremory's red and black magic. It tore a hole clean through his torso, and the fallen exploded into black feathers. Rhea sighed and stood down. Upon seeing Issei and Rainer, she ran over to them. Behind her, Akeno, Kiba, Kaneko, and Mitsuda stood around the blonde girl from the ritual, lying with her eyes closed on what remained of the pew. They all sported various wounds, though none were even almost fatal. Are you both all right? Rhea's asked, looking them over. We're fine. Cal Wardedrick Issei said, panting. He was exhausted and could barely handle his words. Hal Werner is in there, in a cell. She was drugged by Freed, and she's absolutely feral. We've got to find some way to calm her down. Rainer said, pointing to where they'd just come from. Alright. If you can get her to stay still long enough, I have a spell to clear someone's system of any drug. Riaz said. Issei, as worn out as he was, had enough energy to give Riaz a what the hell for. Look. Riaz noticed. We're sometimes called to get rid of someone's addiction. It's an entirely wholesome spell. She said to him, the only thing is, it takes a minute. You'll have to restrain her, and it doesn't feel great. She won't lie down and take it. Rias explained. Rainer nodded. She looked to Issei, who was basically riding on her shoulder at this point. Can you keep going? Rainer asked. She didn't want to push him, but she needed his help. From the looks of the devils, they wouldn't be able to handle keeping Kalawarner at bay. Boost. Drake called out. Issei had been about to say no, but Drake boosted him again, against his will. Suddenly, he could stand again, though his muscles still felt more sore than they ever had. I guess so. Issei said, groaning and flexing his hands. Hineko, can you come with us? Akeno, stay here and wait for the girl to wake up. Riaz asked and ordered. Kaneko walked over to the three of them, and they all started back down the hallway. Okay, so we've got to beat her up a little bit and keep her down, while Riaz casts her spell. 
simple enough. Rayner said. The door was still closed and they could still hear the poor woman behind it. She was groaning and scratching at the door, trying her hardest to get out. Issei, who was now back up to three boosts, walked to the door and pushed it open quickly, hitting Kalawarner with it and sending her sprawling backwards. Issei and Kaneko rushed in, trying to grab the flailing Kalawarner, but she kicked Issei in the stomach and threw Kaneko across the room. Kalawarner jumped to her feet, charging at Issei with a light spear in hand. Rainer was in a flash, crossing her own spear with Kalawarner's. Kalawarner calm down. We're trying to help you. Rainer yelled. Kalawarner stopped snarling for a second and stalled, pausing her attack for long enough that Rainer disarmed her and sent a swift kick to her midriff, making her double over. Rainer grabbed her hair and forced her to the ground, putting her knee on Kalawarner's back to stop her from getting up. The woman writhed and thrashed. Issei and Kaneko ran over to help. It hurts it hurts help me, help me. Kalawarner started frantically yelling while Rainer fought to keep her on the floor. Kaneko grabbed her and Issei tried to keep her arms contained. Even at four boosts, it was quite the challenge, and he had no idea how Kaneko was managing both with no problems. Rias, do it. Rainer yelled. Rias quickly kneeled down by Kalawarner, initiating her spell. Kalawarner starting struggling even harder than before as Rias' spell began to purge her body. She screamed and flail about, striking Issei and Kaneko several times in her fit. Several intense moments later, Kalawarner let out one final yell and stopped moving. It's done. She should be fine now, I think. Rhea said, finishing the spell. Palwerner lay flat against the ground, breathing heavily. Issei and Kaneko let go of her, and Rainer got off her back. Rainer kneeled beside the blue-haired woman. Palwerner? Can you hear me? Rainer asked, looking down at her. Palwerner groaned and turned her head up so she could see who was speaking. Rainer? Is that you? She asked, scared. Rainer laughed in relief. Yeah, it's me. She said, Issei came over and kneeled beside Rainer. You both came to save me? Kalawarner asked, looking up at them. Sure did. Issei said, smiling. Thank you. Kalawarner yelled, bursting into tears. She threw her arms around Issei's leg, much to his surprise. We'll be waiting there. Ria said, smiling. She and Kaneko left, going back into the main room. Okay, okay. Can you stand? Issei asked. Kalawarner tried to stand on her shaking, only to fall back down. Issei caught her before she hit the ground, then had to be caught himself as Drag once again announced reset. Rainer laughed at the two of them in a heap on the ground. She stood up, then bent down to help the two of them up. They both took one of her hands. The three of them walked out, Rainer at the center, while Issei and Kalawarner both had an arm over her. You are going to feel this tomorrow, Issei. Most of the time, an untrained red dragon can only reset once before needing to rest. Tomorrow definitely won't be fun for you. Rainer said. Issei half-heartedly laughed, but didn't have enough gas left in him to respond. Rainer was more dragging him than she was helping him walk, but she didn't mind. Back in the main room, Rhea's gremory was assembled with her entire peerage, as well as the blonde girl who had been the target of the ritual. She was now standing and healing the members of Rhea's group. Thankfully, she also was now wearing a nun's outfit instead of being Dot. Are we all good here? Rainer asked. These two can't even stand on their own, so I want to hurry and get them home. I think so, but first, let the newest member of my peerage heal you. Asia, if you wouldn't mind. Rhea said, gesturing towards Issei and Kalawarner. Oh of course, um, Master Asia said, unsure of quite how to refer to Rhea's. Just call me Rhea's, Asia. I don't mind. Rhea said assuringly. Asia nodded, smiling, and moved to heal Issei's arm. He would have thanked her if he could work up the strength to move his face. While she healed him, Rhea's told them where she'd come from. According to her, Asia had met Mitsuda walking around town and he'd helped her find this church, though at the time neither of them knew she was only being summoned here to be killed. After finishing up with Issei's arm, Asia moved to start healing Kalawarner. Kalawarner saw the girl and recoiled in terror, almost dragging both Issei and Rainer to the ground. Whoa, okay, what's the problem? It's already hard enough to hold the both of you up, I don't need you yanking us around. Rainer grumbled. W when FF Freed was hurting me, she kept Aichi healing me. She wouldn't let me die or even pass out. Kalwerner said, horrified by the small girl's very presence. Sounds like you owe her your life. I'd thank her if I was you. Rainer said. Kalwerner didn't say anything but let the girl approach to heal her. Kalwerner's face was lined with fear as Asia did so and it took everything she had to not flee. What Freed had done to her would leave lasting mental scars and one of them was apparently being terrified of the harmless nun. Sorry Asia. It'll take a bit for her to get over all this. Rainer said after the girl finished healing Kalawarner. And no, it's fine. 
Um, Ms. Kalawarner, I I'm really sorry I couldn't help you, Asia said, before backing away and returning to Rhea's side. So, is that it? Raynor asked. No one replied for a second, but as the green circle of the fallen angels appeared underneath them, Akeno called out. Wait a second, please. Akeno yelled. Raynor huffed, and she cancelled the spell. Fine. Hold on. Raynor said a say and Kalawarner on a pew. She'd grown tired of carrying them, and if his soft breathing was any indication, Issei had literally fallen asleep, so it's not like he would care. Kalawarner groaned as Raynor laid her down. She was no longer visibly injured, but she was definitely still both in pain and exhausted. What is it? Raynor asked. Why did you save me? Akeno replied frantically. You could have just let Freed kill me. I was so mean to you, and you had no reason to, so why did you save me? The devil asked. The question seemed to be driving her insane. Raynor didn't say anything, but she looked to Issei, sleeping on the pew. A look of comprehension passed over Akeno's face, and she calmed down. Oh. I get he would want you to. You've got yourself a catch, Raynor. Akeno said, grinning. Raynor looked surprised. How did you know my real name? She asked. Rias answered. I told them. That's what Kalawarner called you when you woke up, so I just assumed it was your real name. Don't feel bad, Sona and I use aliases all the time. Rhea said with a grin. Well, Rias. Akeno. Kiba, Kaneko, Mitsuda. Asia. Thanks for all your help tonight. I don't think we could have done it without you. Raynor said, nodding to them. Of course. Rhea said. No problem. Thanks for saving me. Akeno said. Yup. Kaneko said. Coincidentally, this was the first time Raynor had heard the girl talk, and she'd honestly thought Kaneko was mute. Sure thing. Kiba said. Asia nodded. You're welcome. And, uh, Raynor. Could you do me a, um, favor? Please. Mitsuda asked. He seemed uncomfortable and not used to the words he was using. What is it? Raynor asked. She didn't like the boy, not after all the things he'd done, but she was willing to hear him out. Could you, uh, could you tell Hayato I'm sorry? For what I've done and said. I know I said it myself, real this time. Mitsuda replied. He looked down and wouldn't meet anyone's gaze. Rainer smiled. She hadn't expected that, but she'd take it. Sure. With that out of the way, she took Issei in Kalawarner's hands and teleported them back home. Bali, the white dragon emperor, watched the church from afar. He had Kakabiel unconscious and broken, lying at his feet, while Vali himself had not even a scratch. His counterpart had been there, fighting, at the church. He'd hoped to see some of his rival's power, and he had. But, he'd been disappointed. So, so disappointed. Issei Haidu hadn't even reached the second liberation of the boosted gear, much less the balance breaker. How long would it take? How long would the juggernaut take? Vali wasn't a patient man. I'll wait for now, Haidu. But if you make me wait too long he'll have to speed you up. Issei opened his eyes, but he didn't move. He couldn't move. His muscles felt like lead, and every time he tried so much as twitch, his body flared with agony. Welcome to hell. Greg. Is this because I was boosted after resetting at the church? Because that was, like, 1000% your fault. Issei said. He could talk fine. Not even going to say good morning Issei. Issei heard Rainer's gorgeous voice, but he couldn't look at her. His neck refused to turn, no matter how hard he tried. The most he could manage was wiggling his without sending jolts of pain all throughout his body. Good morning. I can't turn my head. Issei grounded, laughing painfully. Yeah, I guessed you wouldn't be able to. You boosted way more than you ever have before, and you fought hard. You fought amazingly, really, for your first time in a battle. So, that's why I decided to reward you today. Raynor said. She slowly moved into Issei's view, and what she was wearing almost destroyed his mind. Raynor had on a French-made outfit. The black lace complimented her in every way possible, and the white brought out her fair and flawless skin. The frilly short skirt and long black stockings were every man's dream, and that includes Issei. The boy's eyes nearly popped out of his head. R.R. Raynor why are you wearing that? Issei yelled, frantic. Rainer feigned sadness. Aw, Master doesn't like my outfit. She said, putting on the face of a hurt puppy. That's not you look breathtaking, but that's not the point. Why are you wearing that? Issei repeated. Because, you're going to be bedridden for the next day or so, and I want to make sure you've got something to look at during that time. Rainer said, standing with her waist dead to the side and her hands on her dot a heavenly smile graced her face, so perfect that Issei's heart couldn't help but dot. But, we're not we aren't going to say was trying to say something, but he couldn't seem to get it out. Raynor picked up on what he meant almost instantly. We won't have until you're ready, Issei. I promise you that. I'll wait however long it takes. That being said Raynor said in a sultry voice and sashayed towards Issei. 
She got on the bed and crawled forward until she was directly over him, facing down. She leaned close to his ear. I'm ready when you are. Rainer said in the most Ive voice Issa had ever heard in his life. Not only that, but to add insult to injury, she licked the edge of his ear. Before the tomato red Issa could even croak out a response, she jumped off the bed and went back to standing. Rainer he managed to say. Yes. Rainer said sweetly. I love you. But Suda was at his house, relaxing on his bed. His feet were up, his eyes were closed, and his arms were crossed behind his head. A floor fan whirred next to him, and all the lights in the room were off. His black dog, or rather, his sacred gear, as Rias had called it, was lazily snapping at a fly at the foot of his bed. Bitsuda had been unable to find the time to chill out lately, so he was taking it where he could. Ever since the incident with the church a couple weeks ago, he'd been doing work as a proper devil. Running flyers, completing contracts, whatever Rias needed. At first, he was extremely reluctant to call her master, and truth be told he didn't think much of the girl at all, but as of recently he found her growing on him. She cared for those under her, that was undeniable, and she seemed like a good person, if a little spoiled. She rewarded hard work and pushed for the best in her family. They'd been working with Issei and Rainer to hunt stray devils, and something of a partnership had been forming between Rhea's peerage and the couple. Issei and Mitsuda's relationship continued to improve, and Rainer was getting along well with the rest of the peerage too. Everything seemed to be going well, and Rhea's attitude reflected that for a while. But recently, Rhea's had been irritable and distant. Mitsuda didn't know what the catalyst was, but she'd get angry at the drop of a hat, and every time he looked at her she seemed to be deep in thought. The boy was so deep in thought, he didn't notice the glowing magic circle appearing in the center of his room. His dog barked, catching his attention, and he suddenly became very aware of the red glow his room had taken on. Mitsuda flew off his bed, just in time to be tackled back onto it by none other than Ria's Gremory herself. Wah? Ria's, what the hell are you doing here? Mitsuda said, shocked. Without even so much as a warning, the girl had teleported into his house and fallen on top of him. Not only that, she was in a sorry state of attire. The corset that normally complemented her school uniform was gone, and her white shirt was half undone. The bald boy couldn't help but look at her cleavage, and Ria's noticed. She got off of him, standing a couple feet by his bed. I'm sorry. I've thought about it, and there's no other way. I could ask Kiba, but he's too much of a knight. Issei might work, but with Rainer around there's no way I could get close. As Ria spoke, she finished taking off her shirt, revealing a bright blue bra. She unzipped her skirt and it fell to the ground, showing the confused boy her matching bra and panty set. After she removed the shirt and skirt, she climbed on top of Mitsuda, on his bed. No other way. What are you talking about? In her movements, she grabbed his wrists, and his eyes went wide. Get off of me. Mitsuda yelled, suddenly and violently pushing the girl off of him. He'd been hurt by too many people in life, unauthorized touching was a strict no-no, even for someone like Rias. She triggered his memories of being held down and beaten, and he didn't react well. Rias fell backwards onto the ground, landing on the floor with a yelp. She sat up with a confused look on her face, like she hadn't expected that to happen. Mitsuda's dog jumped beside her on the floor and eyed her warily, tail straight and ears flat. Rias looked up at Mitsuda with an hurt but understanding expression. I'm sorry. I didn't think about him sorry. I have to go, she'll be here soon. Please forgive me. With that cryptic series of words, Rias stood up and teleported away, leaving a confused Mitsuda sitting alone on his bed, rubbing his wrists. What the hell? Mitsuda asked himself, trying to figure out what just happened. There was a knock on his door, and he looked just in time to see it open. A Giorgento, Rias' newest bishop and the nun from the church incident, walked into Mitsuda's room with a worried expression. Are you okay? She asked. I heard some noise and came to check on you. Asia said, tilting her head in worry. Yeah, yeah I'm fine. Thanks. Mitsuda replied, sitting up. The dog approached Asia, and she rubbed its head lovingly. So what was the noise? Asia asked, sitting down on Mitsuda's bed. Rias was in here. Rias? What did she want? Is everything alright? Not sure. She teleported in, started undressing, practically tackled me, and teleported away. No idea what it was all about. Rise Haidu, everything was going great. A week and a half ago, all of Issei's possessions had been delivered, all sorts of things from furniture to decorations to artifacts. A lot of it, the boy had just donated away, but there was some stuff he'd kept. Some old relics from his biological parents, some furniture, and one of their cars. Issei fell in love with the car as soon as he saw it. Now, he was a modest person, despite his luxurious upbringing, and he liked simple things, but, when he saw his new Lamborghini Aventador, he instantly knew he wanted to keep it. So, the car, affectionately named Prowler by Rainer, sat in the parking garage at the foot of the apartment building. 
Besides the prowler, there was only one other notable item. A dagger, one his father owned when Issei was just a child. The boy actually didn't know it existed, it was found inside his stepfather's desk, meaning he'd stolen it from Issei before he even knew. The dagger was gorgeous, from what Issei could see, and he liked the shape and weight of it. He'd asked Rainer if she could tell whether it was a real dagger, and she'd give a response in the affirmative. Now, Issei didn't know the first thing about fighting with a dagger, but he decided to keep it nonetheless. So, long story short, Issei was doing fantastic. Rainer, on the other hand, was not doing well. Her situation was just as good as Issei's, sure, but she was having one major well, major to her, issue. She couldn't eat Issei. Ever since the church incident, she'd redoubled her attempts to get Issei to love her physically as well as emotionally. After all, Rachiel was the angel of quality, and to be a virgin at 4,000 years old, as well as being a felon it was embarrassing to say the least. For thousands of years, Rainer had refused to sleep with anyone. Not because she was a prude, she was quite the opposite, actually. She'd simply never found anyone worthy enough. Now that she'd found her one and only, however, she was making every attempt to get him beneath the sheets. But, nothing seemed to work. No matter what she tried, the boy would only blush and stammer an excuse. At one point, he'd even fainted. She wasn't bothered at first, and as a matter of fact she thought it incredibly cute, but as a week of failed attempts passed, she began to feel like a clown. It was obvious he found her gorgeous beyond comparison, she didn't doubt that for a second, but, nonetheless, he refused to sleep with her. Well, not refused, more like he simply wasn't capable of responding properly. It perplexed Rainer, and at the same time, made her a little frustrated. What bothered her the most was that she knew what the problem was. It was just a simple matter of him not being confident enough. It's understandable, really, considering his distrust of women, but Rainer figured they were far enough along to be past that. It irked her, knowing what the issue was, but not knowing how to resolve it. How does one gain confidence? He'd grown out of his shell exponentially in the time she'd met him, but he was by no means a confident individual. The worst part about it is that he'd have more than enough confidence after the fact. If there's one thing to break a shy guy out of his shell, it's a roll in the hay. Rainer knew that, and it only bothered her more. All things considered, her recent mood was not a good one. Issei had started to notice, too. Of course, being the kind of guy he was, he didn't understand why she was irritated, but he'd picked up on the change in her attitude quickly. He tried conversing with her, but she seemed uninterested and irritable. He knew something was bothering her, but she wouldn't tell him. So, only moments before Ria's had invaded Mitsuda's room across town, Issei was reading in his kitchen, and Rainer was glaring a hole in the back of his head from the couch in front of the TV. Rainer, I wish you'd tell me what's wrong. Issei said, setting his book down and swiveling in his chair to face her. Nothing's wrong. She said, flipping her hair. This isn't like you. Issei remarked. HMPH. Rainer hummed, looking away. She was sitting down on the couch in their sort of living room, wearing nothing but a black t-shirt and black pajama bottoms. Issei sighed and stood up from his chair. Rainer watched him from the corner of her eyes, still facing away. I'm gonna go take a shower. Issei said, a blush on his face. Rainer looked at him like he'd grown a second head. Why in the world would he blush from saying something so normal? Unless was planning something. Sure the angel said, unsure of what just happened. Issei walked to their room and into the bathroom, Rainer watching him the whole way. Rainer got up and walked to the doorway of their bedroom, peeking in. Sure enough, Issei went to the bathroom and the shower was definitely on. So, why the odd reaction? Rainer was so engrossed in thought, she didn't notice the bright red magic circle forming in the center of the room for several moments. When she did realize what was happening, she jumped from the couch with a light spear forming in hand. The brightness of the circle reached a crescendo, and Rainer was ready to fling a spear when Rhea's Grimmery stepped out, minus clothing. The angel and the devil stared at each other for a second, and finally, after a few tense moments, Rainer sighed and dispersed the spear. She flopped back onto the couch, waiting for an explanation. Rhea's, oddly enough, didn't seem to mind or even acknowledge her odd situation. She stood resolute, staring Rainer down. What the hell are you doing? I was this close to killing you. Rainer said, irritated. I need to sleep with Issei. Rhea said suddenly, not explaining a thing. Rainer snorted a laugh. Even if that made sense, he won't sleep with me. What makes you think he'd do it with you? Rainer asked, getting serious at the end of her sentence. Please. I need it. Rhea's asked, her face unchanged save for a brief flash of worry. What? No. I don't know what you thought was going to happen. There's so many things wrong with this that I don't even have time to list them all. Rainer said, looking at Rhea's like she was the biggest idiot on the planet. He owes me a favor. Rhea said, insistent. Yeah, he does, and it's for the rating game. We'll be there. We wouldn't have to do the rating game if. 
Bremery, look. I don't know what you hope to accomplish here. Issei is my boyfriend, and if he's going to sleep with anyone it'll be me. Rainer said, growing intense. Rhea's attitude annoyed her. Rhea's let out a breath, and her tough facade dropped. She looked like she was about to cry. Rainer sneered. What is your problem? She asked. I'm being forced into a loveless marriage with a douch bag. Rhea said. Her eyes were becoming wet. Rainer's whole visage softened. Oh. She sighed. Look, even if I wasn't here, Issei is terrified of women he doesn't trust. I hate to say it, but that includes you. It takes his maximum effort just to hold a conversation. There's no way you two could ever play hide the cucumber. Rhea sat down on the couch opposite Rainer's. The angel looked uncomfortable. She didn't really want to strike up a conversation. Issei wasn't my first choice, of course. Oh? So sleeping with my boyfriend wasn't your first idea. Good to know. Rainer said dryly. I tried with Mitsuda. I accidentally triggered him. Rhea said sadly. Triggered him? Minor PTSD. He doesn't like to be touched, and I completely forgot. Been to handsy for someone who doesn't like to be touched. He sure didn't mind touching Issei. Rainer said, reflecting on the day several weeks ago when she found him mercilessly beating her boyfriend in the schoolyard. While the couple's relationship with Mitsuda had been improving, there were plenty of fresh wounds, and Rainer wasn't a very forgiving person to start off with. Anyway, he rejected me, so I came here. What about your knight, Kiba? I'm sure he'd do it. He might. I don't know. He's too much of a gentleman. And to say he's not. Rainer said with an edge, falsely perceiving a slight against her love. That's not. It's not gonna happen, Rias. Look, I level with you. I've been trying to get him to sleep with me for like two weeks now, and it's not even working for me. He's too timid. Casual isn't really his cup of tea, and if you think you can just waltz in here and take his virginity, you're out of your mind. I don't know what the situation is, but it's not our problem until you need our help with the rating game. Sorry. Rainer said, dismissively shaking her head. Rias, dejected, hung her head. Issei had truly been her last hope. She stood up off the couch and walked back to the center of the room, the same place she teleported in. Sorry to bother you. Telissi said hi. Rhea said monotonously. It wasn't even like she was sad, it was as if every emotion had simply been drained from the girl and her fighting spirit was entirely diminished. The crimson magic circle spun to life under the girl's feet, bathing the room in light. Rhea's, for what it's worth sleeping around isn't the only way to get out of an arranged marriage. Rainer said. She'd seen it happen plenty of times before, and the bride-to-be of an unwilling marriage could sometimes be one of the trickiest creatures in the world. There was always a way out, and she'd find one, even if it came down to a rating game like she'd predicted. Maybe maybe not. Bye. Rhea said unemotionally, before teleporting away. Rainer sighed and sank back into the couch. She really couldn't care less about the devil's marriage, but the way things were, they'd have to help her eventually. The fallen was just glad she could convince Rhea's to leave without a fight. She sat alone on the couch for all of a minute before she was surprised yet again. Um he, Rainer. Rainer sat up quickly, not expecting to hear the slightly bashful voice of Issei. She looked to the source, only to see her love standing in the doorway of their room. And nothing but a towel. All of Rainer's attention was on him in an instant. Issei. She asked, shocked. Issei looked away, a massive blush on his face. Yumi overheard you talking to Riasabit trying to sleep with me the boy said, unable to contain his stutter. Rainer wanted to jump for joy. Was it really happening? MHMM. Rainer hummed, a grin threatening to break out over her features. The boy shuffled nervously before speaking again. Who realized that I haven't been completely fire Andy decided the boy's face was tomato red and he was shaking where he stood. Decided what, Issei? Rainer asked, playing innocent. She knew what was coming and could hardly contain herself. I I decided that if you're really okay with M. Ethan I wouldn't mind. Issei's next words were cut off by a raven blur. Rainer dashed to him and captured the boys in a before he could even react. Several moments later, Rainer pulled back, revealing to Issei her entirely out of character expression. Pure excitement, written all over her face. You're ready? Are you sure Rainer asked, barely keeping it together. She'd been waiting for this for quite some time. Her hands were on his shoulders and she looked at him with blatant anticipation. I, I think so is. If it's you, then yes. I love you, Rainer. I'll do anything for you. Issei said, looking straight at her. His eyes blazed with resolve and he was completely prepared. Which is good, because. Rainer dragged him into their bedroom and wasn't finished with him for quite a while. What are you waiting for, Issei? I'm letting you start this very special night for the two of us, said Rainer, turning around so that her back was facing him. The boy gulped slightly, thinking to himself whether if this was the right decision that he just made. 
making love to the one person that he loved more than anything was a very big step, especially for him. While Rainer had no problem in giving her entire self to him, Issei was having doubts and second thoughts in participating in this kind of act. But I'm inexperienced in this whole thing he mumbled loud enough only for the girl to hear as his grip on the towel that covered his lower regions tightened. Now it had become an internal conflict inside of him, one side was telling him to just go with it and follow his instincts, while the other was telling him to stop and think about this. That's the point, Issei Rainer giggled, turning her head back to look at him with a smile. I'm trying to teach you, actually you know, for beginners, the usual thing to do during this time is to just follow what your instincts tell you. Issei's eyes widened slightly upon hearing her words. But, as a sign of my love for you, I let you do whatever your mind tells you. He gulped again. Are you sure that you're fine with this? It's not too late to change your mind. I'm sure, Issei I want you to make love to me, she assured him, turning her head back towards its original position. Now, come on it's rude to keep a girl waiting she faked a pout. Issei, unable to resist Rainer's extreme beauty in the low light as well as his own mind, gulped nervously one last time before he went behind her and wrapped his arms around her stomach, digging his face into the crook of her neck and intermittently started planting it with soft s. Rainer responded by snuggling back against her other half, enjoying the shower of love he was giving her. She closed her eyes, released a sigh of pleasure, and raised her arms over her head, reaching back and lacing her around the back of his neck, locking him in place. The domino started to fall inside Issei's innocence and state of mind as he lowered his head so that he was on level with hers and planted a soft on Rainer's cheek. She freed her right hand and slowly stroked Issei's cheek, in quietly as she smiled at him. Just like that, Issei now, undress me. The words in soft whisper rang in Issei's head as though Rainer had bellowed them, sending him in an initial state of hormonal hypnosis. Take off her clothes he said to himself as if he was an adult lecturing a baby. His mind melted away, and he let his masculine instincts take over. He had her cheek again and began to slowly remove her black shirt. With every inch of the clothing separating from her body, she leaned her head back further and further into Issei, sighing and softly ing, happy that she didn't have to show a demonstration for him to learn. He then lifted up the bottom of her shirt with one hand, placing the other one underneath it, and started to slowly caress her stomach, sending tickles towards her spine and causing Rainer to lean back even more towards him. Rainer had and will always have a good figure, if not the best figure in Issei's mind. She was devoid of any fat, but she wasn't all skin and bones either. Her skin was soft and was to his touch, and her stomach was smooth flat. After all, female fallen angels were known for their tithe and tempting bodies. Rainer remained still after a few seconds and just let her body melt away into an oasis of intimate ecstasy. Eventually she felt both his hands tortuously made their way up her stomach, and soon enough, they were cupped around her dot. Issei just like that you're not bad at all for a beginner. Whether Issei ignored her or just didn't hear her altogether will never be known, but it mattered to neither of them. While Rainer had always dreamed of having with her beloved, Issei was different. Yes, he had that hidden desire to sleep with the fallen angel, but it was due to his sensitive personality that prevented him from making any move. He didn't trust anyone almost completely back then, but that was changed as soon as she entered his life. Tonight, the Issei Haidu of the past would be forgotten for the sake of one couple's happiness. The two of them allowed their intimate desires to continue to engulf their minds, Issei's hands rhythmically squeezed Rainer's, while Rainer herself reached back and gripped the hair at the back of Issei's head, resting more weight against his body. Both dragon and fallen angel felt their breathing spike in tempo, eventually turning into panting as time passed. After having her massaged for a while, Rainer decided to make her lover finish the job. She just can't have him focused on one part of her all night, right? I say you still haven't took off my shirt she reminded him, trying to hide a chuckle. Oh. For some reason, he felt embarrassed upon not noticing it until the last second. Sorry. Rainer raised her arms back up with her patience disappearing. Issei reluctantly removed his hands from her as he grabbed the rest of her shirt and pulled it up and out of her arms. After tossing the shirt aside, his hands nervously returned to her, and his face buried itself neck, peppering it with s like what he did earlier. As great as his hands felt, she knew he wasn't done yet, and she felt Issei grasp the hem of her pajamas, possibly not wanting to make his girlfriend scold him again. Rainer smiled in a tithe manner upon feeling her lover pull her pajamas down, leaving her completely against the light of the moon. His eyes widened when he noticed that she had no underwear at all, was she planning this hours before. Keep it up, Issei just do what your mind tells you, she said, stepping out of her pajamas the moment it reached her feet. Issei took a deep breath and took a moment to recompose himself before he stood up and threw her clothing away. He put his hands on the girls and turned her around so that she was facing him. His heartbeat grew at a faster rate upon seeing Rainer's body in full view, having the first glimpse of what was to come for this special night. 
Issei tried his best not to get embarrassed, which was failing all the more that only resulted in Raynor's amusement, giggling slightly. That was when Raynor decided to help him for a bit. She pulled him in for a deep, taking the lead almost immediately, because Issei was caught off guard. Her hands went down to his waist at the same time and pulled off the towel covering him up with one swift pull. Issei's heart almost stopped now that his whole self was revealed to his girlfriend. He felt that he could almost die of embarrassment because Raynor was staring at him with a hint of intent underneath, and thus he tried to avert his gaze to the side, which didn't accomplish much, because he found himself also gazing at the black-haired beauty in front of him, admiring how beautiful she looked against the moonlight, which only highlighted her most adored features. For some reason, it came as no surprise to Raynor that Issei's body was well sculpted. While he wasn't overtly muscular at all, his muscles were toned and possessed a lot of enticing contours. That combined with Issei's slightly tanned skin which created him as a likable guy to anyone, not just Raynor. But regardless, his body belonged to one specific fallen angel, as her body gravitated towards his, and her hand started gliding across his torso. I think it's only fair for me to admit that you look so hot, Issei she whispered towards his ear, smiling tively. Issei blushed in embarrassment upon hearing her words, and at the same time, he felt happy as the flattery was something very new to him. No one had ever commented Issei on any of his physical features, he'd always viewed himself as a lowly person with nobody by his side. No one called him ugly or anything, but he'd never been called outright handsome by anyone. Hearing something like that from a person he found to have unparalleled beauty such as Raynor, it meant a tremendous deal to him, and he took the comment to heart and kept it as a confidence booster for this special night. Well, I don't think I need to say what I think of your body, Raynor you probably have a good idea already, he complimented back, which only caused her to smirk lightly. Of course I do I know you love my body as much as you love me, she teased him, making his blush deepen into a darker shade that only caused Raynor to chuckle at how easily he gets embarrassed when she teases him. A few seconds later, she stopped and looked at him once more before she outstretched her arms in an inviting manner. Well, go on and don't stop here, Issei let's continue. Feeling that her words were like a special trigger in his mind, Issei embraced Raynor, pressing his body against hers. The contact between their skins began to rile them up again, sending shivers down both their spines as a result. Her against his bear very nearly triggered an animalistic reaction that he realized could harm her, so he managed to fight off any desires on her body. Due to his dragon side, he felt a slight change in his state of mind that he noticed quite well. If he allowed this to continue, he may not be all that embarrassed anymore, but it could lead to Raynor getting harmed. So, as gentle and loving as he was, he fraught off his own intimate desires in favor of cherishing this particular time he was having the girl he loved. Issei carry me towards the bed we can't keep standing here all night she had in his ear. Without hesitation, Issei reached down and lifted Raynor's out from under her, and soon enough, she was cradled in his arms like a child, and he carried her over towards the bed. The girl then pulled him in for another deep which he gladly reciprocated, feeling more courageous with S and embraces now. Issei laid Raynor down onto his bed, trying not to get distracted by her body. As they separated from there, he noticed her staring at him with both passion and lust in her eyes, and that was a signal which said that she wanted to move on with their special night together. Lay down, Issei I'll take it from here, her voice was soft and pleasant, but he followed her order like a royal command from an empress. And with a sudden spike in adrenaline, he too felt his dreariness evaporate. He lowered himself onto his bed, slowly becoming entranced by the thought of cuddling with his beloved Raynor. With his eyes glued to his girlfriend, he positioned himself to lay on his side, arms wide open, inviting her into his embrace just like what she did earlier. But instead of rolling into his arms, she pushed him over onto his back, laying him down flat on the bed. Raynor then found herself straddling Issei and rested her weight on his midsection. She began to run her hands across his shirtless body, feeling every inch of his toned and abdomen. Her hands eventually came to a stop at his and began to rub his with her index dot. Ara Raynor. I'm going to be all over you, Issei. Issei, having accepted that he was going to have with Raynor, was confused as to what her other intentions were, but nevertheless took it with a grain of salt and accepted it for what it was. He was just happy to be with her. But even so, his eyes became fixated on her voluptuous, and it didn't take a genius to see that, let alone Raynor herself. Squeeze them, Issei. Ravage them. Make them feel your passion. You can play with them as much as you want, she stated, noticing the look in his eyes that was longing for her. She removed her from his and lowered her body to lay flat on his, stacking her on top of him like pancakes. They were entangled, and their crutches pushed against each other, causing a tingling sensation to be sent through their bodies that caught the two of them to softly. Issei reached around Raynor's back, running his all over her creamy skin, wanting to feel more of his lover before anything else. Moments later, the look in Raynor's eyes told Issei exactly what she wanted him to do as he locked gazes with her. 
She grabbed both of his hands and placed them on her large dot. He was frozen, awestruck and lacking consciousness. Rendered unable to move at all due to being distracted and absolutely mind-controlled by the fallen angel on top of him. What's the problem? Your hands were all over them just a few minutes ago, she teased before she began to lead his hands into groping and squeezing her own a bit more aggressive than before. Issei was stripped of his ability to speak, and his exhalation stuttered badly. All Raynor did was giggle before she finally stopped controlling his hands' movements after nearly a minute of doing so. Almost immediately, Issei's hands went back towards her out of instinct and desire, feeling that he should do just what Raynor wanted him to do in the first place. In return, the black-haired beauty leaned down and captured his in another, slowly giving in to her lust for the boy. She thought about playing with him a bit more to have fun at her expense, which was immediately broken when she felt something poking her butt. Rainer's breathing accelerated as she knew what it was as soon as she felt it twitch. Turning around, she silently marveled at the sight of her boyfriend's manhood, licking her in hunger, showing more of her fallen angel personality as she wielded essays with both hands. While she pinched and twisted his foreskin with one hand and circled her other hand around the shaft, she leaned forward to reach it with her, pulling her away from Issei. Once he lost grip of her two mounds, Issei somehow regained control of his senses and was able to think lucidly again. He wasn't sure what happened and how it went down, but letting go of Rainer's awarded him his brain back, and he began to think about things as the girl's was just about to envelope his twitching dot. Rainer wait. She stopped in her attempt, looking back her lover with a slightly surprised look. Rainer was almost astounded that Issei still had the ability to speak until now, let alone the ability to put together coherent words, even as few as he said. Issei I'm sorry, I was getting carried away for a second there. Rainer got off of Issei and rested by his side. As she too began to have her senses return to her mind, she began to feel the sentiments take place. Issei moved his back, positioning himself upright and resting his back near the edge of the bed. The two had spent the past few minutes blinded by their own lustful desires, incapable of processing anything else around them, let alone the narrative and sentiments behind what was about to happen. But once their minds returned to them, their physical desires gave way to their emotional ones, and they had a moment to stop and think about each other. And the fact that they were about to forever brand themselves onto each other. For two people who would love each other to the end, it meant a great deal more to them than just a steamy fling. As Rainer lifted herself off of Issei, she quickly reached for a nearby towel to wipe the sweat and love juices off their bodies, which was naturally brought on by their relentless lovemaking. For most, it would have been a sign of a pretty disappointing session, but the two were just fine with it and didn't think much. They wanted the night to be special, and indeed it was. It was already special that they were just happy to be with each other. She laid down next to him after cleaning both herself and Issei up, both lying on their side so that they were facing each other. She draped one arm around him and tucked her hand underneath his head, holding his cheek in it. While they began to tangle, he nestled an arm underneath her side and held her face up cheek with his hand. Their eyes met, getting caught in a deep stare, and once again, they became lost in each other's gaze, and their thoughts began to race. Both had a slight intention of ing again, but alas, they lacked the energy to do so. Rainer tucked her head down and buried it into his says, pulling him tighter and closer to her, as if he was hers. With her last breath before entering her deep slumber, she was able to utter out some parting words, closing out this special night. Good night, Issei I love you. Good night, Rainer I love you, too. Yet in her mind, it was a completely different matter. Thank you for loving me I'm forever yours thank you for opening up your heart to me and thank you for spending this night with me Issei. Why Issei? Rainer and Issei were walking to school, hand in hand. They meandered down the sidewalk, people bustling around them on all sides. Even as the two of them performed the same action, they both had very different expressions. Issei showed signs of extreme exhaustion and stumbled slightly when he moved his dot his hair was haggard, his eyes were half-lidded, and he looked completely worn out. Rainer, on the other hand, looked positively radiant. She smiled brightly, and she had a sway in her step. She was holding herself back so as not to outpace Issei, and it was obvious. Something wrong, darling? Rainer asked, a sweet-as-honey smile on her face. My life is pain. Issei muttered. You're just sore, you'll be fine. You saying that doesn't make it better. Wasn't it worth it, though? Rainer said, a mischievous smile on her face. Issei blushed and didn't respond. Thought so Rainer said. This was the happiest Issei had seen her, ever. He was more than glad he decided to go through with it and sleep with her. They walked for a while in happy silence, before they ran into Ria's group about halfway to the school. Oddly enough, it was all of Ria's group, without Ria's. Even Akeno was there. Hi, you two. Kiba said, waving at the both of them. Issei gave a half-hearted grunt, and Rainer waved happily, shocking most of the devils. You look terrible, hi do. Rough night. 
Mitsuda asked, a knowing grin on his face. He walked side by side with Asia, and the two of them seemed very close. His dog was beside him, choosing to appear as a pitch-black Doberman. They determined his dog couldn't be seen by anybody who wasn't supernatural unless he willed it, so Riaz was fine with him showing it at school and in public. I had a great night. Issei said, monotone. Rainer smiled brightly. You guys smell bad. Kaneko said, sniffing the air. I smell like victory. Rainer said quickly, nodding her head. I smell like I didn't have time for a shower this morning, because Rainer spent the whole time laughing and singing in it. My bad. Is today special? Asia asked, wondering why the fallen angel was so happy. No, but last night sure was. Rainer said, nearly bursting from elation. Suddenly, the Gremory group put the pieces together. Ah he see. Congratulations, I think Kiba said, awkward. Bros. Kaneko muttered. I'm jealous. Okeno giggled. Issei didn't know why she'd be jealous. They were barely even friends. While Issei had gotten over her initial rudeness and her and Rainer were getting along, he still found her persona litigrating. I don't get it Asia mumbled. But Suda just shot Issei a thumbs up. The seven of them neared the school gates, with everyone dispersing to different places to start the day. Rainer and Issei, of course, went to class together. This time, it was Issei who slept and Rainer who paid attention. A sharp jab in the back startled Issei awake. He shot up from his desk, nearly falling over himself in the process. He heard snickering from behind him, and he turned to see his mischievous girlfriend covering her and pointing to what was in front of him. Issei turned back around to see several of their classmates staring at him with odd expressions. They'd all been on the way out of the room when Issei's sudden jump had attracted their attention. Isn't he the singer? I think so's cute. I'm so jealous of you Uma. Tell me about it. Screw that guy. If I could sing like that, I'd have you Uma and not that jump. No uwould and apostrophe t Rainer answered the gossip in a sing-song voice, alerting everyone that should could hear them. She stood up and handed the fluster to say his things. He took them and followed the quickly retreating Rainer out of the room. Ray Uma, where are you going? The exit is that way Issei said, walking fast to keep up with her. I just felt a phoenix devil show up and I'm wondering why. It's this way. Rainer answered, taking Issei's hand and guiding him swiftly down the halls towards Rhea's room. Within a minute, the two of them were outside the occult research club headquarters, or, in other words, the place where Rhea's and her peerage use for devil business. Right outside the door was Kiba, waiting patiently. Oh, good. Rhea's wanted both of you to come. Come inside and stay quiet. Kiba explained, opening the door. Issei and Rainer stepped inside, Kiba behind them. Kaneko, Mitsuda and Asia were standing by the door, Riaz was on one of the couches, and Akeno stood behind her. Other than the usual group, there were two extra people in the room, one, and blonde teenager of about 17 years old, and the other was a maid with silver hair, standing off in the corner of the room. My dear Riaz, I think perhaps you're being a bit too stubborn. This marriage was decided on by your family, and to go against it would the blonde boy was sitting by Riaz, running his right hand through her hair, and with his left, touching her thigh. She looked extremely angry. My family has no right to say who I should marry. Ria said, interrupting him. The future of devil kind is at stake. If you don't continue the line of Gremory, how once again, the boy was interrupted. I will continue our line, but it will be on my own time and my own terms. For the last time, Riser Phoenix, I will not marry you. Ria yelled, standing up in frustration. Oh. I get it now. Rainer mumbled. Issei looked at her, standing on his right. What's going on? Who is this guy? Issei whispered. Well, I knew Riaz was stuck in an arranged marriage, and I guess that's the guy. I can see why she wants out. I'm guessing this is what the rating game is going to be about. Rainer whispered back. Kiba overheard them and nodded in confirmation. That's Riser Phoenix, third son of the House of Phoenix. He and Riaz are engaged, it's just well, see for yourself. The knight whispered to the both of them. To reject me is to besmirch the name of the mighty House of Phoenix, and that is unacceptable. Riser said, standing up alongside Riaz. He grabbed her chin and forced her to look him in the eye. Rhea's peerage looked ready to jump in and defend her at any time, and Riser noticed, glaring at them. I don't care if I have to incinerate everyone in this room, you will come back to the underworld with me. Riser yelled as his body suddenly started to exude an aura of flame, while Rhea's signature destruction magic sparked around her. There's no need for incineration. The maid suddenly said, interrupting them. Everyone present looked to her, the whole debacle stopping as quickly as it had started. By Lady Rias, Lord Riser, as you know, I am here by order of Serzich's, which means there will be no disruption of peace. The maid said sternly. When told such an ominous thing by one who is revered as the ultimate queen, even I can become somewhat fearful. Riser said, shrugging. 
My master anticipated there would be a conflict of some sort. As such, he has assigned me a last resort should communication break down. Rhea sighed. Yes, of course he did. Would you care to be a little more specific? If my lady insists on putting her personal preferences over those of her family, she is to settle this with a rating game against Lord Riser. The maid said. A rating game? Wasn't Sona talking about something like that? Mitsuda asked. A rating game is a game noble devils play with each other. Long story short, they and their servants compete in battle to see who wins. Kiba explained. Mitsuda nodded. I have played through numerous rating games and have even scored several wins for myself. Unfortunately, my bride has never even qualified for an official game. Riser said, flaunting his experience over her. Oh shit, are we at a disadvantage? Mitsuda asked. The boy's dog was riding on his right shoulder in the form of a black chihuahua. That's not all we have to worry about. Look. Kaneko said, nodding at Riser. Riaz, I can't help but ask, is this adorable group the extent of your servants? They're all you have. Riser asked. And so what if they are? Riaz said, indignant. Ha ha. Riser burst into laughter at the notion. He snapped his, and a large magic circle compassed of bright orange flames lit up an unused area of Ria's base. It was a mass teleportation spell, and as it grew in size and intensity, a huge group of women and girls of all varieties were brought into the room. Holy shit. Mitsuda yelled, surprising everyone. Why does your servant curse, Ria's? Is he perhaps shocked at the sight of a real peerage? Riser asked, why? You. The fire surprised me, as all. Mitsuda said, shooting Riser the dot. How vulgar. It would seem your servant knows not his place, darling. Riser said, sneering at Mitsuda. Listen you piece of shit, the Mitsuda, stop. Only person I listen to is Ria's. Mitsuda yelled through Ria's interruption, shocking the redeed. There doesn't need to be a game or whatever, I'll take you on right here. Mitsuda yelled, he and his dog charging at Riser. The black canine shifted form to an imposing pair of shadowy brass knuckles as they ran, jumping on and wrapping around Mitsuda's fists. He jumped in for a wild haymaker, swinging his right arm with force enough to seriously wound a normal person. Mira. Riser yelled, quickly stepping away. There was a flash from where Riser's peerage stood, and before Mitsuda could even redirect himself, he had the business end of a wooden staff firmly planted in his stomach. The blue-haired girl who'd appeared in an instant shoved him upward off the staff, then hit him away with it while he was in the air, sending him flying with a gnarly uppercut to the chin. He landed ungracefully on his face in front of the couches. Mitsuda. Rias cried, and the rest of the peerage plus Rainer and Issei stood ready to come to their defense. Rias rushed over to him, cradling the bruised boy in her arms. Are you alright? Say something. She yelled, checking his body for injuries. I'm all good don't worry about it. Mitsuda said. He passed out not a second later. His black knuckles fell off of his hands, transforming into a vicious-looking wolf, standing guard in front of Mitsuda and Ria's, with his fangs bared and hackles raised, waiting for one of Riser's peerage to make another move. This is the wielder of the renowned Canis Lycaean. How pathetic. Riser said, laughing. The wolf snarled savagely in response, cutting Riser's laugh short. If I tell my brother I agree to the rating game. Ria's said, not looking up from Mitsuda's body. Of course. Grafia replied shortly. A serbal of me when I say we will annihilate you. Rhea said, glaring at Riser from the corner of her eyes. I look forward to it, my dear. I'll see you at the game. Riser said. He walked to his peerage, and they all disappeared into a wall of fire, Riser's laugh lingering until the last speck of flame vanished from sight. Sothet was the guy you need us for? Issei asked, curious. Yes. His name is Riser Phoenix, and he's to be my husband. Rhea said, pulling Mitsuda onto the couch. I guess it's too much to ask you to just bite the bullet and marry him, huh? Raynor asked. Ria's peerage glared at her. What? Of course it is. I'm cashing in on that favor you promised me, Issei. The both of you will join us as proxy pieces for the rating game. Ria said. I'm gonna need a lot of information, I guess and some training, definitely. Issei said to himself. What pieces do you have? Raynor asked. A knight and a rook Ria said, looking away. What? Rainer said, looking at Rhea's like she'd just said the stupidest thing on the planet. You want to reincarnate a six-winged angel and the red dragon with a knight and a rook. Rainer said, looking as if the statement was too stupid for her to process. That's all I have. Rhea said shortly. What about a bishop? Isn't Asia your only one, or did she take two pieces? Rainer asked. She's assumed the redeed would have an empty bishop, as that's basically the only position Rainer would make sense in. I have another bishop, but I'm not powerful enough to control him. Ria's answered. Rainer's hung open, like Ria's was just getting dumber by the second. And you are powerful enough to control Issei and I. 
she asked. Her ears opened and closed, no words coming out. She didn't have an answer for that. Ah, whatever. They're proxy pieces, so it doesn't matter. I'll be a knight, and Issei will be a rook. Rainer said, ignoring that poor planning Rias had done. I didn't know what those are, outside of chess Issei said, feeling horribly left behind in his explanations. They work the same. I'll be a knight, so I'm quick, and you'll be a rook, so you hit harder. Simple as that. That's not how they work in chess at all Issei mumbled. Do he guess you're right? Rainer said, thinking. The game will be held ten days from today. Because of the power gap between your peerage and risers, Lord Serzich's is giving you a handicap. Please use the 10 days to train as much as possible. Grafia said, her stoic demeanor shifting into a more reasonable one. I gladly accept. Rhea said, smiling. She turned to face her peerage and the couple. We'll be going to a grimmery mansion in the underworld. It's a fantastic place to train. Please meet us here tomorrow, and we'll all go together. Rhea said to Issei and Rainer. Sure. Well then, let's get going, Issei. Rainer said, grabbing his hand and leading him out. Thank you both. Akeno said to the two of them as they left the room. Issei waved goodbye. As soon as they were out the door, Rainer teleported the both of them back to their apartment, startling Issei. We should hunt down whoever posted that video of you singing and kill them. Rainer said, setting her things down by their door. Issei put his in the same place, chuckling. What makes you say that? Have you not noticed all the extra attention you get? Girls go out of their ways to sneak a peek of Kuo's famous musician. Now that you mention it, I have noticed. Girls look at me in strange ways, and guys all glare at me. It feels like I did something wrong. Issei said, plopping down on the couch. That's what I'm saying. I've constantly gotta fight off other chicks because they think they have a shot at you. Rainer said, throwing herself over the couch opposite Issei. What? No way. Why would any girls even look at me? Issei asked, not believing her. Because you're cute, famous, sweet, and taken. Taken? Taken? Mine. Girls always want what they can't have. Oh well, they're out of luck, I guess. I can't imagine being with anyone but you. Issei said, lovingly admiring his girlfriend splayed out across the couch opposite him. He couldn't see it since she was face down, but she was blushing. It was strange. It was completely, totally, absolutely strange and it didn't make any sense. Their relationship, I mean. Rainer was one of the Fallen's most feared soldiers. She'd killed hundreds of people over thousands of years, and people who crossed her regretted, always. She worked directly under Azazel for a very long time, and she could most certainly be considered evil. Issei was a rich boy with a bad family. He was depressed, majorly so, and he'd have killed himself if she hadn't waltzed into his life. Not only that, but she was planning on killing him herself. All the odds were stacked against him, and she was the one stacking them. Rainer was more than ready to kill again. All before she met Issei, anyway. For some reason, this horrible fallen had been attracted to the most vulnerable person she'd ever met. At the time of their meeting, Rainer had seen Wood with more will to live than Issei, but for some reason, that only made her want to protect him. At first, she was confused and didn't know what to do. But, the first time she saw him hurt, she instantly fell in love. Her being that had known nothing but violence since the day she fell from heaven, love was strange. It was a foreign concept, one that she tried to attain but never had until she met Issei. When she saved the boy from Mitsuda, she'd felt something in her heart, something she thought was love. In reality, it wasn't, not yet. It was just the inklings of a crush, something she'd never experienced before and didn't know how to handle. But, she embraced it and threw caution to the wind. Within a day, she was completely smitten. And now, several weeks after, she could hardly stand to be apart from Issei Hayadu. Not only had the boy completely changed her personality, but her body itself was in flux. Once you fall from heaven, your wings turn black, no exceptions. That's how it works. But, Rainer's flickered silver. They didn't do it often, only when she was in a good state of mind and lasted for no more than a second at a time. That had never happened before, not to a single angel in history. She didn't understand it at all. All she knew was that when she was with Issei, she felt at home, and when she felt at home, her wings turned silver. You're such a dork. Rainer said, smiling into the couch cushions. Issei heard the humor in her voice and smiled with her. I'm your dork. Forever. Issei said, his usual timidity replaced with the bravado Rainer drew out of him. Hey Rainer. Hmm? The fallen hummed into the couch. Can I see your wings? Issei asked. Without another word, six black wings sprouted straight up from the small of Rainer's back. She them out for him to see. Issei eagerly watched her wings, waiting for some indication of changing colors. What are you waiting on? Rainer asked. She expected him to touch them, since he enjoyed the feeling of her feathers, but she waited and nothing happened. For them to change colors. Does it happen often? 
Issei asked, eager. Not really. I only first noticed about a week ago. I thought about showing it to Kalwerner, but I haven't yet. MHMM. Issei hummed in reply. He ran his down the length of her top right wing, making her shiver in response. He hadn't forgotten that an angel's wings were very sensitive, ooly and otherwise. You're gonna make them blacker, doing that Rainer mumbled, trying to keep the excitement out of her voice. Cool it, perv. I just love how they feel. You're really soft. Issei said, smiling. On his words, her wings flickered silver for a millisecond, just long enough for Issei to register that it happened. I think they just turned silver Rainer said, not looking up. They did, but really quickly. You can tell. Yeah. It's a weird feeling. I guess I can't really describe this to a human, but it felt like the opposite of falling. Weird, right? What did falling feel like? I mean, you don't have to answer if you don't want to. No, it's fine. Rainer said, cutting him off. She sat up, pushing herself off the couch to face Issei. I never have told you how I fell, have I? Rainer retracted her wings, so they didn't block conversation. A black feather remained, drifting down between them. You don't have to. It won't change how I think of you. Issei said, wanting to reassure her before she said anything she regret. You're the best. But, it's only right that I tell you anyway. Only if you're comfortable. They sat across from each other on the couches, Issei facing Rainer and looking her in the eyes. I'll keep it short, I guess. It was way back, before the Great War. I used to be the angel of Uality, Rachiland then, one day, this human gets the idea that he can touch me however he likes. I ignored him for a while, trying my best to in the other cheek, just like God taught him then, he has his hand under my robe. I slapped him away, as kind of a knee-jerk reflex, but I guess I hit him a bit too hard, Kyush died. Rainer said, looking down. Issei could tell she was putting on her best facade to try and act like it didn't bother her, but he could see through it in an instant. So guy died, and suddenly I was an angel who killed a human. There wasn't a trial. I didn't get asked any questions. My wings just turned black, and suddenly I couldn't go home. It felt awful. My old friends hated me me brothers and sisters wouldn't look at me. I never saw God again. I was alone. Rainer's voice tightened up, and she choked on the last words. Issei shot over and immediately held her in his arms, just in time for her to start crying. Hey, it's alright Issei said comfortingly. He hugged her tightly, letting her sob into his shoulder. I'm here. I'm here, Rainer. I'm not going anywhere. Issei said, trying his best to comfort his hysteric girlfriend. She hugged him back, crying freely. Now, Issei didn't know it, but this was the first time she told anyone the story behind how she fell. She'd had the deep-seated issues of abandonment for a couple thousand years, and now all of her repressed emotions were flooding out into the shoulder of her beloved. And, of course, Issei being Issei, he said the perfect thing. I'm right here with you, Rachiel. You'll never be by yourself ever again, as long as I live. Rainer's world ground to a standstill. It had he really just say that. You'll never be alone again. He repeated, stroking her hair. The words she'd waited thousands of years to hear. The words she'd waited thousands of years for the one she loves to say. The words Issei Haidu had just said, holding her while she cries. Rainer laughed. In between sobs, she laughed, harder than she ever had. Issei looked bewildered. He had no idea what to do with the whirlwind of emotions his girlfriend was spouting. Rainer laughed like a madman and cried like a saint. Without even knowing it, he'd just freed her from a life of doubt and loneliness. No, not just then, weeks ago, when he first turned her down for a date. Issei Haidu had saved her soul, and he had no idea. Rainer. Are you okay? I'm not really sure what to do. You big idiot. How am I supposed to be okay after you say something like that? The angel said, sobbing and laughing. I guess you're happy, then. Am I happy? See for yourself. Rainer unfurled her wings. They shone with a silver bright enough to rival the moon. Issei gasped. Rainer laughed. Her smile was flawless. I can feel it, Issei. It's permanent. My wings are silver. I'm not fallen. Rainer said, happy tears falling from her eyes. It's Rainer, that's amazing. Issei said. She hugged him even tighter than before, crying into his shoulder yet again. This time, though, she had a smile on her face. This is all your fault she said, sniffling and laughing. I can't help that you're a bad assassin. Issei said, rubbing her back. Best mistake I ever made. Hey Rainer. Rainer pulled away from his shoulder, looking up at him. I meant what I said. I'll be with you till the day I die. Issei said, looking her in the eyes with a serious expression. I can't win with you, can I? Rainer said. She shrouded them both in her wings and pulled him into a loving dot. Far above the two of them, way up in the clouds, there was a city of gold and happiness. It was filled with angels and pure souls, and far above even them, there was a throne. 
Now, this throne had sat empty for quite a long time, after the death of God. But, recently, another element of his grand plan had been set into motion, and someone did indeed sit on the throne now. It was an old woman, with an elated smile on her face. She cackled softly to herself. Heavenly Mother, is something wrong? A nearby angel, one with golden hair and twelve radiant wings, asked the woman. What makes you say that, dear? You were laughing at something. I was just curious. Oh, it's nothing major. The old god and I were just having a bit of an experiment, is all. It's turning out wonderfully. And, haven't I told you not to call me that? It's too stuffy. My earthly name will do. Ah! My mistake Lisa Lisa. That's so much better. Isn't it a wonderful name? Even better than my real one, I think. Lisa Lisa said, cackling. Teresa. Ah. Too stuffy. You're going to make an old woman faint. Lisa Lisa said, waving her hand in dismissal. The angel laughed at his god's antics. She was a gift to the world, and the previous god had made no mistake in selecting her as a successor. I think it's time I pay them another visit. Won't you watch over things for me here, dear? Of course, heavenly ahem. Of course Lisa Lisa. Thank you. Rainer and Issei had been in the same spot for hours. They'd fallen asleep there, wrapped in each other's arms and surrounded by Rainer's silver wings. Rainer snored cutely in Issei's lap, and he slept silently. They both completely missed the knocking on their door. Alwerner cursed, shifting the groceries in her grip. The last you lovebirds could do is leave the door unlocked the blue-haired full and said, trying to manage several bags of groceries and fish for a key at the same time. Her knocking had been totally ignored by both of the other residents of the home, and so she was forced to make her own way in. Need some help, dearest. Said a voice to her side. Calwerner jumped, nearly dropping her bags in her fright. She quickly recovered on seeing who had actually spoken, though. It was just a cute old woman. Ah he could use a hand, yeah. There's a key in my purse down there, if you could grab it Calwerner said, pointing with her foot at the maroon bag on the ground. No need, honey. I've got one said the woman, before she flashed a key of her own. Lisa Lisa opened the door and walked in, leaving a bewildered Calwerner standing at the door and wondering what happened. Lisa Lisa walked the front of the room, inspecting all the things they'd put in it. Pictures of Issei as a child, pictures of friends, pictures of the two of them. Furniture, odds and ends, a couple artifacts. They'd really turned it into a home, just like she'd wanted. She looked at the taped-over hole in the window, and chuckled. Issei really couldn't have just waited for Sat out to replace the window, could he? Alwerner brought the groceries in, setting them on a counter in the little kitchen connected to the main room. She saw the couple on the couch, wrapped in silver wings, and her eyes went wide. Lisa Lisa noticed them at the same time, and gasped. Oh. Aren't they precious. Look at the two of them, all curled up like that. Lisa Lisa said, a radiant smile on her weathered face. She approached the couch, looking at the couple with a loving smile. Alwerner's mind was racing with a thousand different questions. Who was this woman? Would she have Akita Issei's penthouse? Was she supernatural? And what in the world had happened to Rainer's wings? Lisa Lisa looked behind her to see Calwerner looking absolutely shocked. Oh, right. Sorry, dearest. I suppose this is my fault. Why did you have a nap, hmm? Lisa Lisa said. Calwerner's eyes rolled to the back of her head and she collapsed to the floor. Lisa Lisa hissed, imagining that that probably hurt. She snapped and Calwerner was suddenly in her bed in her bedroom across the house. This is everything I hoped for I'm so happy for the both of you. Lisa Lisa said, admiring Rainer's silver wings. Heavenly mother, you're needed in fifth heaven. We've made a breakthrough. A communications magic circle played into Lisa Lisa's ear before dissipating. Ah, pooh. Well, that's all the time I have today, my cuties. Be strong for me, okay? It's gonna be a wild ride from here on out. Lisa Lisa said. She turned to leave, but then her head perked up as if she realized something. She looked behind her, at the couple. Her eyes widened in shock, then happiness. Lisa Lisa grinned. Then, she broke into a full-on tap dance, careful to be quiet. She didn't want to wake the couple up, but she was absolutely elated. The elderly woman approached the two of them, slowly and quietly. She bent down by Rainer and put her hand to the woman's stomach. You be strong too, alright. Mommy and Daddy are gonna love you. Lisa Lisa stood back up, smile on her face, and teleported away. Say. Issei. Issei. Issei's eyes opened slowly after he was woken by several pokes to the cheek. Bosuat. The groggy teen asked, shaking his head. When his vision cleared, he was greeted by the sight of a smiling Rainer. She was still in her cool uniform from the day before, and so was he. You're cute when you sleep. She said, smirking. Issei didn't have anything to say back, he just blushed. She giggled. Issei remembered the position they were in. 
She was sitting on his lap, and they were both on the couch. Is that a roll of quarters in your pocket, or are you happy to see me? Rayner said with a sly grin. Issei blushed violently. Rayner was right on the center of his lap, and he'd just woken up. Uckwarders. He said, playing dumb. Really? All right, how many are there? Rayner asked, coy. I'm 25. Issei's mind was blanking out. Really? It doesn't seem like 25. Maybe I'll count them. Rayner said, lightly touching his quarters. Issei's face turned completely tomato red, and he shot up from the couch. Rayner stood up with him, laughing. Her wings were out behind her, and they shone the same silver they had yesterday. While Issei had found her raven feathers beautiful before, the silver wings were a brief taking. Rayner noticed him staring at her plumage, and she absentmindedly twitched the top two wings, bringing his attention back to her. It didn't last. As Issei slowly woke up, he looked out the window and realized the sun was already out in full force, something that wouldn't be the case if they were on time for school. Oh, man. What time is it? Issei asked, slowly coming back to reality. Half past nine. Issei's eyes went wide. They were very late for school. How long have you been up? A few minutes. Ah, Issei rubbed his forehead. What's the matter? It's not like you're gonna fail from missing one day. Rayner said, retracting her wings. I mean, you're right but... Plus, it gives us more time to spend together. Rayner said, getting up close to him. Issei fell backwards, back onto the couch. Rayner fell on top of him with a grin, blocking him from getting up. As much as I'd love to see what kind of monster the two of you could cook up, I don't think I need to see it happen. A voice came from behind them, in the front door. Issei and Rayner both sighed. She rolled off of him, and the two stood up. Yo. Azazel said with a grin. The man was dressed in black robes and looked pretty comfortable. Do doors mean anything to you? Issei asked. No. Why? Azazel replied, grinning. He looked at Rayner, who was walking into the kitchen to get a drink, with curious eyes. You some different. Rayner snorted. Tell me about it. Did something happen? Azazel asked, looking between the two of them. You could say that, yeah. Issei answered, following Rayner into their attached kitchen. Well, I'm all ears. Azazel said, waiting for them to tell him what was going on. Issei and Rayner looked at each other, Issei nodding to her. Rayner looked back at Azazel and released her wings. What? Azazel asked, in dumb shock. He'd never once in his life seen an angel, fallen or otherwise, with silver wings. As a man who prided himself on his knowledge, to not know something was less than desirable. Jealous? Rayner asked, flapping her new wings. Did you get a paint job or something? There's no way those are real. Azazel said shaking his head. They're as real as you or me. Issei said. Okay, will us anything different? I mean, your light or magic or anything? Azazel asked, scraping for knowledge. He would try to touch them or take a feather, but he knew the overprotective dragon wouldn't let it happen. Azazel remembered what happened last time he'd implied a threat against Rainer. He won't touch her. Issei had said, way back. Azazel didn't doubt him. When I find out, you'll be the first or maybe, like, third, to know. It only happened yesterday. Rainer quipped, annoyed by his flurry of questions. What were you doing when it happened? Was it instant? Azazel asked, eager to scrape anything he could from this. Dust a king. Rainer said, shrugging. Azazel hummed, not quite believing her, but not wanting to call her out on it. We've got to get to school, so is there anything in particular you needed? Issei asked, rifling through the fridge for something to eat. Uh, yeah. I ran some tests on that drug Kalwerner got dosed with, and I got some results. Really? What was it? Rainer asked. It's a variation of a drug used by sacred gear wielding terrorists, called Chaos Break. Normally, it just lets them sort off use with their gears and become monstrously powerful, but the version used on Kalwerner was designed to drive normal people mad. I don't know how Freed got his hands on it, but that's not good anyway, are the two of you busy? I literally just said we're going to school. Issei asked, standing up straight. There was nothing in the fridge, so he'd just be hungry till lunch. Azazel snapped his, like he'd forgotten. Oh, right. Sorry, this silver wing thing has got me all mixed up. Well, I'll keep it quick, this is important. Do you remember a few weeks ago, the night you attacked the church? Yeah, why? Issei replied. I told you to ask Rainer to teach you how to contact me. You never did. Azazel said, grinning. Issei grimaced. Oh, right. Sorry about that, I just... Don't worry about it. I should have explained better then, but I didn't have a chance. I'll start with this, your mom's name was Elsa, right? Issei's jaw dropped. He didn't even think Rainer knew his parents' names. He definitely never talked about them. So, how did Azazel? Uh, ye Dr. Elsa Haidu. Why do you ask, and how do you know that? Issei inquired, suspicious. 
Rainer watched without saying anything. Issei never talked about his mother, and she never asked. It was a sore subject. What do you know about her? Azazel asked, rubbing his chin. I know she was a great person, and the car crash stole her and my dad too soon. Look, we've really got to get going Issei said, taking Rainer's hand. He started to walk to the door with her in tow, but Azazel's next word stopped him in his tracks. She left something for you. Azazel said, smiling. Issei turned to him. He didn't say a word, he just walked back over to where the man was standing. His face was a cacophony of emotion, and he struggled to keep himself contained. What do you at are you talking about? Issei asked quietly. Azazel reached behind him and pulled an old leather-bound journal from his robe. He handed it to Issei, the boy snatching it hungrily. As soon as he opened it, a letter fell out of the front of the book, which Issei caught before it could hit the ground. He started opening it, and Azazel cleared his, grabbing Issei's attention. I'll leave you to it. Give me a ring sometime this week, huh? We've got a bit to talk about. It's been a long time, Issei. Azazel said, waving and teleporting away. Issei's and eyes were wide open. He held the letter and journal in his hands, staring at the floor where Azazel had been. Issei? What in the world is that nickname? Rainer asked, confused. There's only one person who ever called me that but there's no way Issei mumbled, shocked to the core. Who was it? Issei. Rainer asked, looking at his face with concern. One of my mom's oldest friends, pretty much my unclish called him Ziz. Wait a second Ziz is Azzel are you ain't kidding me Issei suddenly yelled, figuring something out. Rainer looked surprised. Issei almost never cursed. To hear him do so, and do it loud, made her assume something crazy just happened. Issei, what are you talking about? Azazel is my uncle. Issei said, whirling around to face Rainer. He had stars in his eyes and looked more excited than she'd ever seen him. Rainer rapidly opened and closed her eyes, trying to come to terms with what Issei had just said. Your uncle. But, you're a human. Not biologically, of course, but he was really close with my mom, to the point where he was basically family. But, if it was really Azazel we did he wait so long to tell me? Why did he leave me with that garbage? Issei asked, suddenly becoming solemn. Why would Uncle Ziz leave him with his awful step-parents? Surely he knew Issei was suffering. Hey, Issei, I'm sure he had his reasons Azazel's not a bad guy, if he left you there, he didn't do it to hurt you. Rainer said, wrapping her arms around Issei's shoulders. He touched her hand, trying to glean some assurance. All thoughts of school were forgotten as Issei remembered the letter and journal. Issei set the journal down on a countertop, near where they stood in the kitchen, and opened up the envelope the letter was in. Inside, were several pieces of old paper. He gingerly took the yellow documents from the envelope and unfolded them. My dearest child, if this letter reaches you well, I want you to know, I love you so much. Your father and I had to leave you early, it would seem, and for that, I am so sorry. Tears fell from Issei's eyes as he read the first part of the letter from his mother. Rainer was right there beside him, reading along. I have much to say and little time to say it, so I will keep myself brief, I have known about the supernatural world for quite some time. It was first revealed to me when I unwittingly worked with the Governor General of the Fallen Angels, Azazel, on a project in Jerusalem. Can you believe it? Azazel himself, as recorded in the Bible. I suppose, you know him as Ziz. Yes, your uncle Ziz is the highest of the Grigori. As you are right now, you're probably going to have mixed feelings about him. Why did he leave me with those awful people? You'll think, I assume. But, don't hate him. I ordered the man, in the event of your father and I dying, to cut all contact with you and your step-parents. I didn't want you becoming involved with the supernatural until I could be sure you were ready, and now, I hope you are. If everything went according to plan, you should have met Azazel several times already, though I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't give any signs of being Ziz. He never failed to impress me with his skills in deception. Anyway, if this letter was delivered in a timely manner as instructed, you should be in your late teens. This is the same age your father became aware of the supernatural, and so I think you should too be able to handle it. You always shared his strength, even as a boy. In the event that you haven't been told about the supernatural, allow me a brief explanation, things are not as they seem. Angels, fallen angels, devils, gods, demons, monsters, and all manner of other being walk this earth with you. I wish I could be there to tell you more, but alas, all I can share with you is this, keep your mind open and your eyes wide, and I should think you'll see more than your share of otherworldly creatures in your time, just as I did. But, I digress. You're probably wondering, why would you leave me with those awful people? Well, Issei, I have no answer that can justify what you went through. We gave your step-parents exclusive rights to you because we needed you safe. While your life with them was far from ideal, it was a protected one. If everything predicted has come to pass, you should be reaping the benefits of our choice by now, no. 
If not, I deeply apologize, and I ask that you keep your head up, my son. You're destined for greatness, I know you are. Don't let something as trivial as two mean step-parents get in the way of your conquests, hmm? Tears fell freely from Issei's eyes. Rainer had stepped back, letting him have his moment with his long-dead mother. She could sense deep sadness within the boy, but also unfathomable happiness. Issei, my darling. Time grows short. I have instructed Ziz to give this letter to you and make contact if and only if he thinks you're ready, and to keep an eye on you from the shadows. I have so much to tell you, but if I were to keep a long story short as they say, I would tell you this, I have seen your future. In my travels, I came across an item that showed me the future of myself and two others, you and your father. Of course, your father and I shared the same fate, but you, my son, have a much greater path ahead. I have adhered to the prophesied chain of events just as I was shown, but even then I cannot be sure everything will come to pass as I have seen. If this is the correct future, then won't you tell Rainer I approve? I'm so happy for the both of you, and I could not hope for a better daughter-in-law. And, hey. Don't be afraid to go on the offensive with her. I promise, you won't regret it. Issei smiled through the tears. His mom was one step ahead, as always. Ah, I know I must sound like a broken record, but my end is drawing ever closer. Within this journal, you will find a record of all my exploits, and I do hope you'll choose to continue it with adventures of your own. The ring I have given you will serve you greatly, and I hope, if anything else, you have also kept the dagger, it too was quite the find. Issei. Tonight is the night your father and I go to the cinema. I'm sure, if you're reading this, you know what that means. My son, I miss you. I love you so, 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 so 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 very much, and I only wish that I could be beside you as you triumph. I'm proud of you, and if your father had seen what I did, I know he would be too. You've become a fine young man, and it is my greatest sorrow that I can't be there to watch you grow up with my own eyes. I know you'll read this with tears in your eyes, but please don't be sad. You've made me the happiest mother in the world. Even in my whole life as a treasure hunter, nothing I've ever found could compare to you, my little boy. Goodbye Issei. Elsa Haidu, loving mother. Issei gingerly set the stack of letters on the countertop next to him and then braced himself on the same counter. Rainer was by his side in an instant, ready to comfort him. The boy sobbed, but he was smiling all the same. The two of them didn't say anything, they just stood there. Issei cried into Rainer's shoulder, just as she'd done to him. She knew what he was going through better than anybody. After several minutes, Issei pulled himself away. His face was red and puffy, but he still smiled. Rainer looked up at him, concerned. I'm gonna go take a shower, alright. We need to get ready for later. Issei said, wiping his eyes. Rainer knew he was just going into the shower to cry some more, but she couldn't exactly judge him for that, could she? Not that she would, anyway. Sure thing. Don't hurt yourself, or I'll come in after you. Rainer said, winking. Issei laughed and fled to their room. As soon as he was gone, Rainer's curiosity got the better of her. She gently picked up the letter, quickly going over what it said. She gasped and covered her dot she didn't cry, but she too was smiling for Issei. He must not have had any kind of closure, and this was exactly that. Sighing, she turned the papers over, more as a reflex than anything, not really expecting anything from it. But, she was surprised to see more writing on the back of the last page. Rainer glanced to the bedroom, making sure Issei wasn't coming back, and then back down to the letter. To her great surprise, the writing on the back was addressed to her. Dear Rainer. I'm sorry you and I will never get to meet, I would have loved the chance to thank you in person. You might be confused as to how I'm talking to you, but remember what the other side said, I've seen the future. I know as soon as Issei went to cry in the shower, you went for this letter. Don't worry, I'm not mad, and he won't be either. If you hadn't looked, he would have shown you anyway, so don't feel bad. But, back to my main point. From the bottom of my heart, Rainer. Thank you. You saved my child. I know very well he would have killed himself, had you not shown up. And for that, I can never thank you enough. And, if what I'm saying makes no sense to you, allow me to elaborate. The day after you asked him out, when he was getting beaten up, Issei was going to kill himself. He had every intention of going home and cutting his own wrists. I guess I should explain a bit better, I didn't see the future, per se, I saw many possible futures. And, much to my horror, in the ones where you didn't get to him fast enough, I had to watch my own son kill himself. I can't even begin to describe the feeling, watching my little boy take his own LaFay shudder at the recollection. But, you saved him. In this future, if you're reading this, you saved my son. Rainer, if you'd asked me a while ago who the best match for my son would be, I don't think full an angel assassin sent to kill him would ever have even crossed my mind. But then I saw how the two of you meshed. You fit together like pieces on a puzzle. I've seen you talk, I've seen you laugh, I've seen you cry. 
if you gave me a thousand years and a list of all the people on the planet, I couldn't come up with a better match for him. You're his perfect girl. Oh, how I wish I could have been there to see you walk the aisle. You're going to look wonderful in your wedding dress, I know it. It makes my heart heavy to know I'll never meet my daughter-in-law, but all the same, I'm glad to have had this chance to tell you how I feel. Now, as I said to say, my time draws near. I have only one more thing to say. Take care of my baby, will you? I'm entrusting my child to you, Rainer. I'm sure, as a woman, you understand what this means. Ah, I wish I could be there to see your face. Oh well. Goodbye Rainer. Dr. Elsa Haidu, proud mother-in-law. P.S. Maybe invest in some baby shoes. If it's a girl Rachel. If it's a boy come up with something good, will you? Issei is bad at names. Zokso. Rainer's hung open wide, and her eyes, too, grew wet. She wiped her face, not wanting to cry, and set the pages back down where Issei had had them. Elsa's letter had been shocking, for several reasons. Issei was going to kill himself. Lisa Lisa had mentioned it once, but to think he really would have done it it made Rainer sick. And then, what was that about babies? There was no way, not after one time not as a fallen angel right? Rainer's head was spinning, and she didn't notice Issei come out of their room. The boy, dressed in only a towel, jumped at her from behind, and yelled her name. Rainer. Ah. Rainer nearly jumped out of her skin, Issei scared her so much. She turned to the laughing Issei, glaring at him. Her heart was ing, and then she saw him, standing there, in the towel, dripping wet and her heart started to a bit more. Recovering her wits, she turned on him. Oh, Issei. Could it be, perhaps, you want another taste of what happened the other night? Rainer asked, Tive. She sauntered towards him, swing her and biting her bottom lip. The towel-clad boy suddenly lost his smile, realizing he'd just startled a very predatory fallen angel. Wait, Rainer, we've got to go to school. We're already late, we can be a minute. Riaz wants to leave after classes, so we've got a bit anyway. Don't think you're just going to get away with scaring me. I'll get my payback Rainer said, cornering him against the wall. She undid the loose ribbon at the top of her uniform and unbuttoned the top two buttons on her shirt, leaving Issei with a bird's eye view. Issei narrowed his eyes. Alright, fine. Fine. Mom said I should take the offensive, so I will. Issei said. He grabbed Rainer's right arm at the elbow and pulled her in for only, he skipped her and went straight for the unsuspecting angel's collarbone. His other hand landed on her thigh and started snaking up. Rainer Ed, not expecting the sudden move from Issei at all. But, she didn't let it stop her from reciprocating. She hastily undid the knot on Issei's towel with her free hand, leaving him completely in the nude. The boy only paused for a moment before returning to the rapidly forming hickey on his angel's neck. They did, in fact, not go to school. They should be here already. Rhea said, aggravated. They weren't in class today, from what I've heard. Maybe something happened. Akeno offered, thinking. Someone would have told us if something went down, right? Kiba asked. The occult research club was gathered on the second floor of the old school building, their headquarters. They all looked ready for a trip, with bags packed and all. Mitsuda and Asia sat on one of the couches, Kaneko and Kiba on the other, and Rhea sat at her desk, with Akeno standing behind her. Mid-conversation, the door quietly creaked open. Everyone in the room turned to see Issei poke his head in, then enter with Rainer. They both had bags that were obviously packed in a hurry, and their clothing was disheveled. Issei had a blush, and Rainer was practically glowing. You guys were doing the nasty, weren't you? Kaneko asked, sniffing the air with a disgusted look. No yup. Issei and Rainer both had very different reactions, making the whole orc feel a bit awkward. Riaz hesitated, blinking rapidly, before getting down to business. Okay, well, now that we're all here, we can go. It's a short train ride, and then we'll hike a bit, and then we'll be at one of the Grimmery mansions. Everybody ready? Everybody answered in the affirmative, and within moments, they were en route to the train. So that's what a devil mansion looks like, huh? Issei asked, dropping his cargo on the ground and sighing in relief. Not what you expected. Rainer asked, walking beside him. I don't think so Issei replied, shaking his head.